Hello and welcome to the Women Speed Chess Championship. I'm Women Grandmaster Dina Belinka, and here today with me in the studio is Grandmaster, Woman Grandmaster, Katie Sasalashvili. Hello, Katie. Hello, Dina. Hello. I wish I'm a Grandmaster, but no, I'm a Woman Grandmaster. But, Dina, we have a Grandmaster here playing in this match today, and I'm very excited about that. So today we will have a great master from China, Ho Yufan, playing against international master, uh, Gulnar Mamadova. Oh, wow, well, this is the match, the match of the mo many, many fans have been waiting for because <laughs> it's not just a uh, uh, super strong players competing, it's the, the the living legend, uh, Grandmaster, who you find, and uh, it's very, it's very rare opportunity to see her playing nowadays. So I am extremely excited about today. I guess so. Do you? Yes, 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 yes. We all want to see her playing more, more chess. And here we have, um, yeah. So let us tell you about the format of this event, even though you know it already. This is the last matchup of the quarterfinals, uh, the matchup number eight. And the format will be, first of all, we'll be having 75 minutes of five plus one, then 45 minutes of three plus one. And finally, for the desserts, or maybe... Um, not yet, 25 minutes of one plus one. I say not yet because the dessert could be the uh, the tie breaks. Uh, Katty, do you think there will be tie breaks here? Um, I'm ready if we have tie breaks. And um, also the most exciting part of this format is Armageddon as well. So ready, ready. They can, <laughs> they can take us to the tie breaks as well. Uh, let's speak a little bit about the price fund. So basically, it didn't change much since yesterday, but still, uh, first class, uh, first price is twenty thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and uh, players are competing for it. Second one is twelve, followed by five thousand dollars. But okay, these prizes are super high. But what we know, players do not fight only for the prizes, but also for the dignity. Mm -hmm. And now let us uh, remind uh, ourselves uh, what is the score sheet? Who are the players? Who are the names that already qualified? We know now for sure that Katerina Lagno, Nana Zagnidze, Harika Dronavali, Anna Muzichuk, Bibisara Asobaeva, Lei Tinji, and uh, Antoinette Stefanova are already our semifinals. And the last name will be found out today. Yeah, that's right. Let's also take a look at the previous results and once again uh, check who won the match and what was the score between these two players. Not two players, this, uh, these players. Uh, 14 players to be, uh, <laughs> to be exact because uh, the last two we're going to find out today. So the most the most uh, the, the biggest tension was between Alexandra Kostinuk and Harika Dronavali because Alexandra was leading the the main part and then it all decided on the tie breaks. Uh, also, Arena Crush versus Nana Zagnidze had a super 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 tense match. Uh, Arena was uh, an underdog and she managed to 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 make an amazing comeback. But some of the matches were also um, pretty, um, pretty quick uh, to uh, to follow. And mm. what are your stakes for today, Katy? Do you think uh, Gulnar Mamadova will be suffering, or will she show some amazing fights? Oh, that's a, that's a really good question. I was uh, I was searching um, the games if they have played earlier uh, or before, uh, and I hadn't found any games uh, between these two players. Um, which which actually makes sense uh, because Hou Yufan has been playing um, uh, in elite chess already for years. Then she quits uh, from chess. 
Uh, and uh, meanwhile, Gulnar Mamedova was always there in professional chess and also in uh, national team of Azerbaijan, but she was, uh, she was playing in different boards while uh, Ho Hoyufan was playing on the first board. So for this reason, they have not played any games, um, at least according to my base. Um, and speaking now uh, of her, Gulnar Mamedova, she is a very sharp uh, player um and and i expect a really good fight here absolutely she's also a, a used very used one to the um online playing so let us see how it goes but before let us take a short break And welcome back to the last match of the round of 16, Grandmaster Hu Yifan versus Wuhan Grandmaster Gulnar Mamadova. I am Wuhan Grandmaster Dina Belenka. Here with me is uh, Wuhan Grandmaster Katy Tsatsalashvili. And the games are about to start. We are having the first segment, which is the 75 minute segment of 5 plus 1 Blitz games. We expect a huge fight, but also a big pleasure to see again who you find competing. Katie, we already spoke about the stakes. Uh, what are your what are your predictions? My predictions are that it's gonna be it's gonna be amazing match. I have no idea what will be the final result here. Anything can happen. This is online chess, the most fun. Uh, kind of chess that we have uh, and here we see both players with uh, glasses they are they are ready for big fights they are uh, very focused here we have Ho Yufan this is great pleasure to see her as we have not seen her for a long long period as she decided to uh, continue her studies at Oxford University and later she decided to accept another challenge and nowadays she's a professor at Shanghai University and she has a lot of students indeed and not only uh we are excited to to see that but also we have already um started the games 
And we do see right now the first game. We have uh, international master Gulnar Mamadova with white pieces, uh, starting with some kind of a French defense. Um, also, King's Indian setup, uh, who you find is with black pieces, could also be uh, looking like a Sicilian approach of this. Uh, Katie, uh, what color do you prefer in this? Uh, Position. You know, Dina, it's so funny because I started to have some sort of King's Indian position and Black replied to have uh, French defense. So we have like borders divided and we have two openings on, 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 on the board. Um, I don't know. I really don't know. I think Black here uh, started to uh, control the center much better. And um, for me personally, I like to control the center. That gives um, th that gives more uh, space for my pieces to be active. But on the other hand, here white has a very uh, comfortable uh, play, uh, and it is it is quite easy. Next moves can be knight to two, knight f one, h four. Uh, bishop can de develop on g five, and white is white is aiming um, king on g eight. That's true. That um, that being said, white is uh, going for the king. That should be the main plan. But sometimes also should take care of the center as well, since black will be trying to uh, advance their pawns on the queen side. Um, honestly, I do have some experience here. This is one of my favorite setups when playing blitz because you know. It is actually a kind of a system approach, which means that you can make um, several moves without uh, spending much time. And it is pretty useful in Blades when you can even gain some time, since here we have one second increment. And here we go, Katy, H4, the move that you said. Gulnar definitely has uh, the same approach to this position as you do. Well, uh, B5 followed. And um, what would be the pawn break in your opinion? B5, C, uh, B4, C4, D4. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there are many ways, but I believe the B4 is most powerful here because the bishop from A6 also targeting D3 pawn. Um, and also it's good to have open file for the rook, then rook B8 might come to B3 and make some uh, some difficulties uh, for white. And to me, it seems like... Um, if white has to play a three move and stop this pawn uh, attack on the queen side, it means that black is the first who started the attack. Yes, I do agree with that. And also a three was pretty much um, um, forced because there was this a three idea from black side. So yes, before I do agree, bishop would, uh, the diagonal would be open. Okay, here we go. Knight h2, very nice, uh, aiming to g4, and then maybe even some sacrifices h2 uh, on h6 or f6. Objectively speaking, white doesn't have any advantage here. But once again, mm -hmm. when we're playing blitz, it's more about the, the understanding of understanding of the position that you actually go for being uh, comfortable in it and knowing what to play and you know i also think that gulnar is um uh gulnar should be enjoying this uh as as never before because uh it is true you said it yourself the opportunity to face how you find is especially nowadays is very rare mm -hmm. yes yes indeed um chess is pretty much a psychological game and some players might you know might be um uncomfortable to face uh, at this um at this stage of the tournament the uh, strongest participant of the tournament uh, but for goldner i think she she likes challenges and um i also know in her style it's it's very interesting she is she's a fighter uh and um what I've, I've observed about, about her is that she allows you to get some advantage. And the moment you think that, oh, wait, I have a good position, I have a winning position, then she finds the uh, defense. Um, and also not only defense, but she also attacks at the same time. And she's really tricky a uh, player, very, very, very tricky player. So she could be sometimes like a spider, sometimes like a hameleon, changing her, her attitudes, adapting to the position. This seems like a very, very universal approach. Yeah, this is sort of winning, uh, winning strategy, because at the moment you think that 
I got this position, then she starts uh, with full, full, full energy. Uh, and she's she's very um, very strong opponent, I think, um, for how you fun. Although looking at the rating uh, here, we see a huge, huge mm -hmm. rating difference on chess.com. Uh, seems like how you fun is is playing quite often. Online yes, I I actually think that the biggest um, the biggest um, argument for Gulnar here would be that she she should be having more experience uh, in playing online. Uh, mm -hmm. I actually looked at the how you find profile. She didn't play since December, but okay, that doesn't mean much because we know that uh, professional chess players do have their second, third, and fourth accounts uh, to play. Uh, so to be not re not revealing your your openings, your secrets. Uh, well, yeah. nevertheless, yeah. since she's not a full time chess player nowadays, she should be having less experience in playing online. Mm -hmm. Yes, but I'm I'm sure that she en she enjoys this tournament as as much as everyone. So for the moment, she has a uh, full control of on B file, and she is trying to uh, trade. Uh, Rurik and the queen and if she gets that she if she removes the heavy pieces on the board then she will have clear advantage here because queen side is already open there are several weaknesses here uh, and uh, the only open file b5 is controlled by black so looks like you were right uh, black uh, did uh, start their their attack uh, first. They are mm -hmm. they are ahead of white in terms of who is faster to uh, make their plan come true. Yeah, and oh, Odina, we have also predictions on our channel running, and um, I invite everyone to take a part in it. You can grab some channel points. That's that's cool thing as well. So, what does the pool say? Oh, Paul says <laughs> there are some dramatic numbers, 201,000 versus 18,000. Okay, so uh, that is pretty, uh, yeah, that is pretty interesting. Do please uh, participate uh, in the predictions. Uh, also, it would be interesting for us to know who are you actually uh, counting on here. Mm -hmm. So we yeah. have this um, this B file, which is pretty much uh, under Black's uh, control. We also see the evaluation bar here on um, uh, on our screens, and it mm -hmm. does say that why it is not doing great. Well, uh, terms of material wise, everything is equal, so um, should be not that decisive yet. This advantage. And we know that, mm -hmm. especially in Blitz, everything can happen. Also, Huifan is down on time. Well, she's not in that a big time trouble, but um, uh, we shall see her more of her mouse uh, skills uh, mm -hmm. soon. Yeah, that's right. She's she's losing uh, more time than uh, Golnar does here because, of course, it's uh, harder to find here a winning plan rather to defense. Um, uh, and so that's why Ho Yufan is uh, spending more time here. And on the other hand, there's only one second increment. So at some, at some moment, she has to um, start to play faster. For some players, it is a lot. It is enough to gain even some time. But for others, we have seen so many uh, flags, so many flagging, uh, even in, uh, in this round of 16 uh, Women's Speed Chess Championship. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And we have seen also some unfortunate blunders and mouse slips too. Anything can happen. Uh, uh, let's see. I, I know I know it's hard for the chess players, but it's fun for the viewers and for us as well. Uh, Especially so for us. It, this is what we are here for, to see some action and to see some show. Yeah, I felt I felt a bit like bad person say, saying that because it feels so bad for chess players player's perspective when you have terrible blunder but we like dramas everybody likes dramas and there is no secret about that oh wait the rook speaking is speaking of uh, speaking of dramas uh, queen a4 and now we see that oh white has just lost his uh, e5 pawn this is a central pawn but the most important there is a piece here oh no oh no uh, looks like 
totally lost for white uh, with a piece down. Mm -hmm. I guess um, nothing can help here, white. Yeah. Um, you know, when we have, uh, when we have strongest players, strongest just players, uh, I myself have sometimes a feeling like, oh, wait, they made this move. Why they played this? For example, in this case, why she played D4 move? And right now I understood she played uh, D4 to open up the light square bishop. And then next move we had bishop B7 and there was a whole idea. So amazing game. Very nice uh, um, technique from Ho Yupan. Absolutely, yes. She did play according to the plans and she did show that uh, this system is not uh, uh, is not giving anything for white. Okay, shall we repeat this system again? Uh, we're about to have the next game. It should start in, in some seconds, mm -hmm. uh, but it doesn't start yet. So, um, Katty, um, do we? Yes, we do have it. Okay, finally. Mm -hmm. uh, normally, players are supposed to be um, to send in the rematch immediately. They do not have um, um, any time to recover. This also mm -hmm. makes it uh, more difficult for them. Uh, and um, well, this is uh, this is True. the format. It is like this. They they know it. They know they they can the the conditions. Mm -hmm. So they they are ready for it. Yeah, absolutely. This this is the format what we have here, and uh, players are fully aware of that, um, and I'm sure they are fully focused. However, I agree with that that sometimes when you have some uh, uh, some uh, lose, some blunder, you need some uh, time to to breathe and forget and get ready for the next uh, game. Absolutely. Also, sometimes uh, when you're leading and you know that the segment will finish uh, in some time and you can see the time, you can actually calculate how many games are possible. And, you know, mm -hmm. just uh, drink some water, do some like mm -hmm. uh, scratch your nose and uh, wait until, uh, <laughs> yeah, wait some more time. But OK, these are techniques. We shall uh, speak more of them later. It's more about uh, um ethical part of it but here we go we do have uh, the game number two and not only it is the game number two but also it's the second french defense which didn't continue as the first game we have d4 move number two and in the previous game gulnar playing white played queen e2 so now how you find i would say she actually says okay you go for some um, sidelines i go with the with the mm -hmm. with the main approach, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm sure I'm sure Gulnar is uh, quite comfortable to go to the main lines because, as we know, she's a member of the national team for years. And usually, when you're in the national team, uh, you have uh, several coaches working with you, uh, and um, your uh, opening repertoire is pretty much stable. So, you know. Um, you, you, you can trust that, you can trust uh, your preparation. On the other hand, some players also have um, uh, their uh, blitz repertoire um, and they are playing the positions which might not be a huge advantage for them, but they feel very comfortable to play. Yes, indeed. And um, they do have a big experience here, but the interesting, the interesting part about having your your the pattern for blitz is because all mm -hmm. these games uh, go to the database, and then when you have some important mm -hmm. over the board events, you sometimes do not want to reveal your secrets. Yes. Plus, sometimes it is just um, pointless to 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 go for the main lines because you need to remember, like uh, I don't know, twenty twenty five uh, um, mm -hmm. first mainline moves and you usually do not uh, repass all that before uh, blitz mm -hmm. games because you actually need to save some energy uh what is the um, what would be the the right uh, preparation for such uh for such matches by the way Katy, in your opinion uh, i believe that all these players who got in uh, the um in the uh top 16 and they are preparing against uh, their uh, opponents uh, with the help of the coach uh, as well. Uh, and uh, I believe that it's not only one day preparation, they, they put a uh, hard work in, in here. Uh, that is what happens usually. And I would not be surprised if, um, if these two players are also well prepared. 
Yes, absolutely. It is also about uh, how do you repass your um, repertoire. But okay, let us concentrate on the game. It has, uh, we have already seen, uh, we have already 15, move number 15 on the board. Mm -hmm. Right now, white, uh, um, white gives the opportunity for black to, to trade queens. Uh, who, sh who should be better here in the end game? Uh, I believe white is comfortable to have end game here because black has hanging pawns. Uh, I know c3 pawn is not the best looking pawn over here, but somehow it will not be. Uh, it's not be attacked yet and it's hard to attack as well uh, and meanwhile all white pieces are well developed ready to access uh, at any any squares they would like they are more active there are more space for uh for white and i believe that white has a slightly advantage here uh, and uh, it's also very comfortable to play um blitz in these positions where there is no complication, your opponent cannot really complicate anything, and it's up to you, it's up to your technique. And also, it's easy to play uh, uh, when you have this kind of advantage. Uh, you can make some king moves, you can do some manoring, not losing time, uh, and while it, keeping the advantage still on the board. Yes, also right now we witnessed the rook on b7, which is uh, the the exact place for the rook. It is the best, the dream place for the rook. One mm -hmm. more detail, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, we also have this bishop uh, on e3, uh, which is, um, well, which is a bishop and black doesn't have one and the position is open. So th this could also give some kind of advantage for white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. End game, I believe that it's uh, it's. Uh... Quite, uh, quite good for white. Uh, and now these pawns are uh, blocked, and we know that if hanging pawns are blocked, they can be, they can be a target. So for the moment, they are not moving forward. But black is black is finding some counterplays for the moment. E pawn is hanging. Um, Ah. Perhaps the question is either bishop uh, e bishop uh, uh, d four or bishop f four, but both are bad because knight would take. But mm -hmm. this is a pawn, and you do need to, to defend it. Yeah, I was thinking about if uh, how you find is considering here to play e6 move uh, to sacrifice a pawn, then a rook c7 attack the knight, and then bishop d4 to attack g7 pawn. Maybe she's considering this move rather than to uh, to play some some moves to defense. Oh, she goes immediately. Yeah, she goes immediately rook c7. Now we shall see something like knight e5, knight takes e5, knight takes e5, and then probably bishop a7 with mm -hmm. the idea of uh, training these two pawns. But white would have this a3, which would be a pass pawn. Pretty much good thing for, for your endgame. Yeah, absolutely. Rook and bishop and the pass pawn, um, it's very good combo in the endgame. No. Now that I look at it, uh, white would black would have a knight c six back, attacking mm -hmm. the bishop. No, mm -hmm. is no, it's not dangerous because bishop would just go out. So yeah, mm -hmm. bishop would just go out. Yeah, on c five. Yeah, yeah, on c five for instance. So yeah, okay. Because um, why do we precise that if uh, by any chance uh, bishop and knight uh, disappear from the board? Black would have more chances to make a draw here because uh, we know that rook and games mm -hmm. are always drawish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and here she she captures with a bishop, and uh, our first reaction might be here to capture with a rook. Uh, but if you have an opportunity to keep the rooks on the board and to have rook and the bishop and the uh, pass pawn, this is stronger than just to have bishop and pass pawn. Also, I guess she just told herself that uh, the rook on c7 is 10 times stronger than the mm -hmm. rook on a8, and that's why she doesn't mm -hmm. want to, to trade them. They're not equal. They don't, they don't have the same value. Absolutely. Absolutely. A4. Oh, we're going to say now this pawn going, going, going forward. Yeah. Uh, a5, is, a5 is next move, pretty much pre-move, I, pre I guess. Uh, and white can also attack the um, the d5 pawn. Yes, that doesn't seem to be easy to stop. Rook c5, knight b3. Well, could be knight b3, yes, so it doesn't work. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. so for now the knight is blocking, but once again, the position is open. It is an end game, and white has a bishop, so... 
Maybe even here, rook a7 makes some practical chances for white to win easy. Rook a7, trade the, uh, trade the rooks, and then bishop b6 back, uh, which will support the pawn up to a7. Uh, and that's it. <laughs> that's what, what you want to have this pawn up to a7. Then knight cannot really stop this pawn. And here we go. She heard you. She made it. And now, yes, the knight will try to block the pawn on the white square if he can. Um, but it, it will be super passive. And then the king would just come and uh, take over the whole board. Mm -hmm. Technically wise, uh, position is winning for how you find. The question is, will she be able to convert it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, now it's time for the king to come. On d4, uh, most probably, or king can also remain on the king side, uh, king g4, h4, h5. Yes, followed by g6, and then some kind of a pawn break with h5, mm -hmm. trying to create more weaknesses and uh, pass there eventually. h5 blocking the idea of king g4, h4, okay. It is also well known in the end games uh, that you can just push the h pawn or a pawn. Uh, to 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 grab some space, uh, whatever you want to push your your side pawns, you usually do it with the most um, the the forest. Yeah, because they're uh, closer to to the uh, final square, final destination to be queen, and that makes easier for king to access also the uh, the uh, pawns. Right. So now uh, black does have to stop this uh, a pawn uh, which will uh, force him to lose both d5 and c4 which would make a uh, white being already pawned up okay looks totally winning for now on these two games i uh, i do not see a uh, big resistance from uh, gulnar's side but she does need to um, eventually to to strike and mm -hmm. um we shall be seeing more, um, more tension coming soon. Yeah, absolutely. I think she's calling on uh, the final parts of this format, maybe blitz, three plus one, or even bullet. bullet uh, she yes. might count on that. Absolutely. She, she should have uh, more experience in bullet. That is, uh, uh, there are no doubts. She, even the... Even the the um, qualifications, uh, women's big chess championship have been so so good for for even for training purposes. So she mm -hmm. played all of them and uh, until she qualified. So yeah, absolutely. And um, well, I have seen all these games and these uh, tournaments, and it's it's not easy to get in the uh, in the fi uh, final. So Golnar managed that. She won. Um, she won twice. Uh, in the in one tournament and she's here so that's for a reason right yes absolutely this end game is uh, totally lost now um white will just push this pawn and uh black doesn't uh have any contemplate very nicely played bishop b2 stopping any potential pawn break here i guess uh gunnar needs to resign soon well, um, could that be um, that the, I'm trying to, okay, this is super subjective. Could that be that also the the fact that you're ex actually facing how you find itself uh, affects your game? Um, yeah, yeah, of course, of course. He, she, she might feel this stress. So to play the strongest opponent you could have in this tournament. Also uh, one of the strongest of opponents of uh, opponents of all time. Yeah. Yeah, but this is this is just a game and I believe that uh, Golner at this stage of her career she um she she is fully focused on chess only and she has this approach that I'm play, playing a versus pieces my pieces against her pieces and actually online chess helps with that a lot because you don't see your opponent like over the board uh, and when you play over the board against super strong uh, opponents you always have this kind of you know 
uh, feeling that you're excited, you are scared, you are happy. There are too many emotions, but for the moment she's playing online. She has a uh, computer in front of her and pieces. So uh, I think when, I think it's just, it's just, uh, it's just very hard to play against how you find she's extremely strong. Yes, that is true. And here we go, yet another French defense. This time, line um, option number three, let's call it like this. Uh, the exchanged variation, move number three, e takes uh, d5, e takes d5 happened on the board. The position is symmetrical, which um, could be, um, could be, um, ex yeah, this could, could actually uh, be drawish, so to be. But one should not underestimate the um, the changes that will happen here eventually once all the pieces are developed. Mm -hmm. True. Um, here, uh, Colner chose this uh, structure to be very, very pretty much equal. Uh, and also, it makes some sense. At some point, you just uh, need to make. You just need to score. Yeah, one, I don't know, half half point, then another draw will bring one point totally. So she is, I think, collecting some uh, half points at this format, five plus one. Uh, and then uh, I believe that she will start to use all her forces in the bullet, uh, bullet part of the uh, match. That actually sounds like a very wise strategy, uh, you say just to to make sure that you you just pass this 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 segment mm -hmm. number one with the uh very few very few losses yeah just to to, to diminish the, the number of uh of the losses you can have here and then just uh, just to to go with a shorter time control when where mm -hmm. the chances of uh gambling also uh, rise and uh yeah this could be uh definitely in gulnar's favor yeah, yeah. If I were her, I would choose this uh, this approach. I think it's pretty much practical, and uh, there's nothing wrong with uh, just admit that your opponent is uh, stronger than you are. Yes, that's true. Uh, well, there is stronger, and there is um, being in a, in a good um, shape. You know, in a good mm -hmm. uh, form you are um, like ev everyone is a is a human and sometimes uh, your head functions better sometimes worse we both know that uh, we have been competing for 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 ages and uh, yeah this is also a um, normal thing so even if uh, Hou Yufan is definitely stronger she could be uh, this or that day not in her best state so this would also yeah. increase the chances of any anyone who is facing her so one should never um, be one should not one should never fear of this uh, mm -hmm. this big name oh you know Dina um uh, Gulnar is one year older than me and Hoyufan is one year younger than me <laughs> so or two years younger than me and I have seen both of them at youth championships um, sometimes playing in in the same category as I did sometimes in the um, different uh, categories but we have played into the uh, at, at the same tournament at the same place and it is quite awesome to see um, them now at this at this place it makes me feel really good yes absolutely and uh, well the world of chess is is pretty pretty small <laughs> i guess like in any any sport uh, any any short discipline uh so well yeah it's uh it always pleasure sometimes you take their you take the part of, of the side of the player sometimes you take the side of a co commentator i also competed in the um in the qualifications for instance and i know what it is when you play with under this pressure mm -hmm. and uh also the the knockout events uh, are super stressful and this is one of them so you like even if you face the best there in the end of the day, there is only one place that um, that counts. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Speaking about the position here, uh, still nothing changed actually. I was worried that we have been <laughs> trash talking so to be for, <laughs> for some time, but here we go. Nothing actually changed because the position is still symmetrical. There has been no uh, pawn break and um, 
pieces are trading um, slowly. The evaluation is still equal. Um, what can we mm -hmm. say about it? Um, I believe it's equal position. However, uh, I would personally choose black pieces. It looks to me more active uh, because when I say these knights on uh, on d2 f f3 or d7 f6 they are fighting for the same squares usually uh and at this at this position they are not strong knights they are just knights uh and the bishop from f4 is pretty much um controlling many squares uh and here to play with black is uh, very easy also to go to the end game it can be uh quite easier to uh, to play because you have bishop, bishop can access to any square much more easily. Um, and at some point you can even start to, to push a little bit here on the king side with g5. And what is actually stopping that with g, g3 here? Uh, so black can make a decision to, to, uh, to have the bishop or just to trade. And she, uh, she traded the bishop for the knight um and then then there are gonna be a fight for e5 and e4 squares for the knights the one who gets this square uh will have better position it is true and i just witnessed that uh actually gulnar offered a draw mm. when playing g3 that is interesting being why she's she basically said the same thing that uh, you and me we said to each other you just need to 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 pass this part to um, mm -hmm. to just to to keep it uh with the um, uh as it is uh, trying to avoid uh, losing but okay uh who you find refused and then mm -hmm. she took on d2 i mm -hmm. just wanted to say that uh the fact that you said two knights protecting each other this is basically known to be bad because yes, knights shouldn't be fighting for the same um, for the same square. When one knight attacks each other, they are usually weaker or more passive. But okay, the position has changed. We already see there is no symmetrical structure anymore. Mm -hmm. The f7 and g6 pawns uh, versus g4 and h3 also the um this h5 move as you said trying to get some space and to to open the position wow rook e8 that is interesting rook black rook doesn't want to attack the h3 pawn anymore even though that was a um how we call it back no how do we call this pawn? It was a weakness uh, here. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was a weakness on on yeah. on h7. Uh, I would I would try to find some knight maneuvering uh, to attack that pawn. Uh, but what Hoyufan is doing, she wants to have full control on e file, uh, and as White can't really set up any fire on the board, she has time to come on e8, come on h8 any moment she she feels that like. White cannot really go against it. White cannot uh, change the character of the position for the moment. Yes, it is true. She, so she is actually maneuvering. That is how we could mm -hmm. call her her play here. Yeah, and... now she got this knight on g5. She knows that h3 pawn is a, is a weakness. She is keeping the eye on it, um, but she's doing it just a, just a bit slow then, then, you know. Which is also wise because uh, sometimes you just want to you know to confuse your opponent you want mm -hmm. to to just to to play here and there attack this that and then you see he will eventually collapse because it is usually way harder to defend than to attack mm -hmm. and now she's offering the queen trade even 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 we know that when the king is uh weak and now g2 king is a weak uh, it's better to keep the queens on the board, but um, this is really practical decision. If white uh, trades the queens, then uh, she should be ready to give up h3 pawn or uh, allow black pieces to to get inside of, uh, of white's position, like it's just happened right now. Definitely. Now we see actually already advantage for black, already pawn up. She did manage to um, to overplay. Who you find did manage to overplay from a completely symmetrical and uh, equal position. That is impressive. Yeah, yeah, we're learning a lot. 
<laughs> this is true. We are actually learning. Also, this this is something I wanted to add. Um, is it like a, a thematical uh, thematical match for for the French defense uh, lovers? Mm -hmm. Say, if you want to study French defense, just join our uh, commentary. Yeah, girls like to play, uh, play French defense. I have seen other commentaries too, and what what I heard is French defense in most of the positions. Yes, that is interesting. Well, it is simply a very solid opening. And uh, maybe it's not just about girls or boys or any gender. It's more about that the it is a good opening for Blacks. So um, whoever plays it uh, should be having a should be having decent positions. Mm -hmm. And here we have a uh, night end game with extra three points. And this is uh, this is more than enough to uh, to win the game. And with this a6 uh, move, uh, Hoyu Fan is completely stopping any counterplay that black, uh, white might uh, look for. Definitely. OK, here we go. One more totally winning position for Hoyu Fan. I am starting to be a little, um, little worried for Gulnar. We, we do want her to fight. It is not so easy, but she's there. She has qualified. You know, the chances, by the way, of qualifying from the, um, from, mm -hmm. the uh, from the qualifiers. Well, what are they? Every, every Swiss tournament there have been uh, around 100 players and only one place given to to them boy that was super hard and she did manage it so she has something she has something mm -hmm. she just needs to show it to us today because this is the right moment indeed and she has some time now we, we're going to take a short break so the players and we'll come back shortly
and welcome back to the Women's Speed Chess Championship. We have the last match of the round of 16, the match that many have been perhaps waiting for the most because we have the one and only, the legendary Grandmaster, how you find, competing against international master Gulnar Mamadova. And so far, we already have this score, which is 3-0. Are we having an adoption match here? <laughs> uh th th that's the that's that's a good question but you know to to be to be fair it feels so bad when you play online chess uh so many eyes are on you and you are not scoring anything so let's everybody root together now Gulnar Mamadova to score some uh some points that's gonna boost her confidence as well and I'm sure that she is um, she is going to show us uh, her best and she can do it for sure. Definitely. And one more question I wanted to ask and I didn't manage to because the games have already started. My question was, were we expecting the French defense once again? And here we go, French defense. <laughs> yes, an answer came, came, came here. We have the same position. Uh, seems like uh, they it's the main line for them um and uh, speaking of the top top players usually they play many lines they play e4 first move they play d4 uh and uh, with the black also they can play um many openings that is really cool thing you can uh, choose uh from the um from your variation whatever it feels um right for you um, and also when you start to play uh, some opening, uh, you have a feeling that, okay, I can improve here because I remember this line now. Um, and also they had some time to, to look to the variations. I'm, I'm sure they, they both uh, started to check the lines. Uh, what do you think? Uh, they, they checked the lines or they just, uh, you know, relaxed a bit for, before that the next is, uh... stage? That is indeed a very good question you're asking, and I had the exact same question to you, actually. Oh. Last time I covered um, the Women's Speed Championship, it was with Grandmaster Alexander Kostinuk, and I was desperately trying to, to, to get her to tell me, should, should one uh, actually be, um, be checking mm -hmm. the openings well, the breaks or not? And you know, the answer is not evident. The answer is not evident because simply it could be also important to save some energy. So it is, it is very um, special. Mm -hmm. It depends for everyone. It's very subjective. Yeah, it's uh, mm -hmm. like everyone uh, um, makes as it works for him or for, for them better. But uh, mm -hmm. it is true. You can check some lines. You can gain some, some information from it. You can even improve but you also need to to keep the energy you also need to relax because uh, this uh, this format is super exhausting and mm -hmm. uh well let us uh, let us see if we have a chance to ask these players about it after after the match uh, if they if they do that if they actually use their time to to check and improve their opening lines yeah, I would not be surprised if Colnar did because she might have some uh, some issues in the opening. So she, in my opinion, checked the lines. Um, and meanwhile, Ho Yufan is ha is having um, three points advantage for the moment, uh, and uh, probably <laughs> probably she just used this time to to relax a bit i'm checking the time right now and it seems uh seems like 8 p.m in uh, in china in shanghai shanghai that's probably where she lives um and it is it is for me it is quite late to play chess at this time uh because i'm a morning person how about you dina oh now you are you're exposing me i actually <laughs> am not a morning person at all but, you know, uh, speaking of when you have uh, this um, type of competition, you adapt. You don't have um, much choice if you know that your games are about to start super early and you're a, um, how they call it, uh, you know, definitely when you, uh, a late all, midnight all. 
Mm-hmm. Is that uh, the thing? So anyway, when you have a match in the in the early morning, that is not your perfect timing. You just need to uh, to to make your routine so that you come prepared and you come ready. Mm-hmm. And uh, eight pm is also more or less. Um, not that late comparing to what it can be because imagine here we have matchups from players among all the world and we can have americans facing uh, chinese and this is uh, this is uh, this is tough and they have the completely different uh, time zones well um we also know that Magnus Carlsen himself is not a morning person, and he actually scores uh, less when he when he has to play uh, in the mornings. That is an interesting thing. We shall uh, also uh, we shall yeah we, perhaps we can save this one as a question to how you find yeah. uh, if we manage to interview her later. Yeah, well, I also know in many chess players uh, they are not morning person people like they they like to have uh, sleep in the morning to get some energy and then wake up uh, right some some hours before the game just to have some quick lunch uh, some preparation and then go to to the chess game with a fresh mm-hmm. brain and it actually makes sense because myself being a morning person wake up it's early morning then <laughs> by the time of the game i'm exhausted already without uh, without a nap i cannot play so i uh, am yeah. that makes sense why just players are not morning people yeah that is true also but feeling himself himself uh, said that you actually like whether you wake up early or not you do need to have a, a short nap before you uh, before the game after the lunch but okay mm-hmm. uh this is more about blitz and let us uh, let us see how it goes we actually have this same type of position we had already Correct me if I'm wrong, wasn't it in the game number two, this kind of uh, variation of the French defense with, uh, yeah, the mm-hmm. main line, well, it was the previous game that you find played white herself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was in the second round. Uh, and what do we have over here? I really like the knight on f6. Uh, oh, no, no, don't give that knight. I like that. Oh, wait, the moment but you said it, knight she... takes the end. <laughs> But why she took that? That's so so strange for me. She took the bishop, right? So she oh okay, she, maybe she was afraid that that bishop might come on h5 at some point. Bishop, yeah, or maybe h5, the pawn push uh, that mm-hmm. she did. H5, like, h4, and, and bishop h. Yeah. And she found a way how to block it. This is very nice. Now her bishops, even if the position looks uh, closed, the mm-hmm. bishops are. We're looking better than these knights, I have to admit. Once again, we have this caddy. One knight mm-hmm. defending another. It is passive. It is bad for them. This is not the way how you should take care of your knights. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They One is active, one is passive. Um, let's see what White is doing. White is uh, uh, opening the H file for the rook. Maybe she wants to play rook H1 at some point uh, to control H file. After queen e8, now bishop g4 makes sense for me to have bishop on h uh, h5 now. Uh, if she if she uh, loses the control over h5 square, then black will start to push h5 by herself. Uh, oh, why yes, she... Now we do have a queen trade. The position changed. There is no mm-hmm. attack anymore for black. White's plan could be also one day to remember that uh, there is a rook out there stuck on a2 with mm-hmm. a push of a pawn, preparing, making some weakness for, for black. Mm-hmm. Rook oh, that, I like that pawn. very much. Uh, to push a4, uh, to weaken the b6 square, that's what black has to do uh, to stop this a pawn. And then bishop c1, bishop a3 comes to open, uh, open diagonal. I like that idea a lot. Yes, absolutely. Activating your your two worst pieces, worst pieces here. The rook on a2 was really bad and the bishop on d2. So now we have already a good rook attacking the weakness on b6. Also, mm-hmm. yeah, now the question is uh, when will the bishop uh, be activated? I guess it's just a question of time. Yeah, here we go. Exactly. There we go. It's easier, it's easier to play here. Uh, with white because uh, the position is 
not that close. This bishop still has some activity. Another bishop can also come from h5 to create some threats on from f7 to e6. So they are they are strong. They are strong. Uh, there can be some ideas as well you know, when the king side is blocked to play rook b2 back rook b1 target b6 and to look for some uh, sacrifices there on this file. Yes, yeah, so in fact, here white has an option. There are two weaknesses, h6 and b6, and you only need to choose which one to go for. Mm -hmm. Or maybe, as we've seen that in the previous game, just to uh, to wait, maneuver here and there, and the opponent, the opponent will just collapse himself. Yeah, you know what she's doing right now? She's attacking h2, h6 uh, pawn because uh, in that case, king is too far to defense this pawn. B6, um, in that sense, uh, is protected by the king um, as well. So yeah, exactly, exactly. You did everything here. Yes. So her idea is to to target h6 uh, pawn and then start to uh, capture the knights. So these knights are defending each other, defending the weaknesses, but you can you can capture them very easily. Yes, but. Oh, well, now she put the rook away. Okay, again, waiting move? Maybe, maybe. Uh, yeah, so the thing is that she will just uh, take one or other knight sooner or later, and then there will be so many things to defend. Black will not just be able to defend all of them, even though he tries, he tries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And look at the evaluation bar. It is giving some advantage to white, but not such a decisive one. Mm-hmm. We have the knights uh, here, and well, to to our to our look here, it is protected. Everything is protected, but how you find with twenty seconds on her clock, where and how will she break through? Mm -hmm. Now she's uh, regrouping her pieces. She she lost H file not lose she left the edge file with both rooks and now she's coming back as well oh uh, that's easy easier play for her um but she has less than 10 seconds on the clock uh and she is trying trying to find the right moments to uh trade the knights so we actually entering the most uh exciting part of the show for both of us finally seeing how you find being low on time with some seconds on the clock and not yet having won her game which uh, forces her to to show her her skills in, in playing uh, online blitz yeah absolutely absolutely and here we have here we have the first draw first half point for Gulnar Mamedova um uh, that's what she needed. Well, that's what she needed. She needs to uh, to make some several draws if she cannot win the game to uh, get the match into into the uh, less time control when anything can happen. And also, it is extremely uh, important for the chess players to score some uh, points when they know that these games are watched by many many people right now. Uh, so uh, I don't know, it bothers me uh, pretty much, um, although I have never played some so strong online events. Uh, how, how do you feel, Dina, when you play online? Is it some sort of pressure on you? Well, there is one thing which you already mentioned, which really uh, fascinates me about online, is that you do not see your opponent mm -hmm. and uh, you do not get affected by this psychology, especially when facing those so to be psychologically difficult opponents of yours. For example, some of the players are really well known to be staring at uh, <laughs> at their victims, so to be. So <laughs> when you're facing someone uh, who is staring at you or whenever you're trying to think, it is uh, intimidating. And uh, all this um, tricks, so to be, are not uh, the case in online. So um, for people, I guess for people who can focus on on the game only, who, who as you said, uh, play the pieces, the position, mm -hmm. 
the the factors are are different they they do not see this change but for those who are um, affected by uh, this um side things playing online is definitely a new thing which is also an a nice thing yes um if yeah you, your question was addressed to me uh, as a player mm -hmm. i don't have the answer yet i think i didn't uh, compete much uh, that much online yet even though i com i have been competing for more than a year like since mm -hmm. the pandemic um, um started, started i yeah. Uh, yeah i actually i actually started playing as as much online as i haven't never uh been doing before and i do enjoy that and uh yes this is also some people say uh this is also a new generation this is also a new uh the future of chess being online because this could also um put us closer to the esports uh which could uh create an amazing opportunities i just uh i couldn't finish that word because i saw the queen was hanging but now <laughs> everything is fine uh, both the, yeah the knight cannot take because the bishop is there uh what about you Katty? what is your experience and uh what how do you feel uh when playing online uh playing online is is uh is fun even though i'm not the best online player uh but i believe that if you train if you put some some time in it you can you can be one um uh, because there are some techniques that it's uh it's possible to achieve after sort of trainings uh, uh and uh, be resistance to do it uh but it's uh it is it is annoying for me to to know that i'm not scoring uh, a, po a point and uh, um i know that many many people many supporters are are following and they are getting really sad with my point and i don't know why i'm thinking about that but you know you you are thinking about this topic as well uh, maybe not exactly during the game because you have so many tasks to solve, but uh, before the game, after the game, if you lose, like, oh no, uh, because for me it's very important and I know that my family usually watch my games and they are very stressed if I lose. Uh, and yeah, luckily I'm not playing that much, so they are not. Uh -huh. They are not very stressed. <laughs> I guess it's uh, the question of how you how you look at it uh, from what side. Because imagine uh, it is also an an up just the opportunity to be facing how you find. That's mm. not uh, not everyone has this chance. And if we put um, ourselves on the Golnar place. Um, mm she must be enjoying it even though even if she's she's uh down uh, some points even though she's uh, the underdog she must be enjoying this opportunity especially nowadays uh, once again we already mentioned that the holy fine is not competing much anymore katy mm -hmm. um do you actually think we should uh she would come back eventually to the uh, professional mm -hmm. professional chess um that that's a really really good question and um i i don't know actually if that's her who should know maybe she's not considering yet to come back uh but stress is something that once you got poison you cannot get rid of it and once in a while you will play some some tournaments um but also um um being a chess player you're um gaining so much skills uh and so you are uh, you are curious of many things in your life uh and all these skills that you're getting from chess you can use to the other profession and it just depends what is her um what's what's her dreams what she wants to do what are her uh, goals yeah yeah like what she really enjoys to do it's it's her who should make any decision of course we want to see her playing chess uh because she uh, she was competing um very very strong opponents and she was really strong her peak rating uh was 26 58 um there was um she was in the top 100 world uh, players yeah. of, uh, yeah, the, at her peak rating. Maybe, maybe uh, if we're lucky, we could ask her this one as well um, uh, when we get her for the interview. Yeah. And um, getting back to chess, did you notice how she abandoned that A7 pawn, uh, which is uh, 
is a backwards poem. This is the mm -hmm. word that I have been looking for so backward. <laughs> yes. Backward poem. This for is the backward poem. Rich. She abandoned it and why didn't take it? There was this rook a c8 move, very nice. Mm -hmm. And in the case of rook takes a7, what would happen then? We could have c2, a super strong future queen. Perhaps mm -hmm. this was the reason why why well, didn't take didn't accept that uh, pawn uh, sacrifice and um, now we have the position after trade of these pawns okay no more danger for white but white is super passive white is super passive look at the rooks look at the queen compared to this amazing knight on d5 h6 yes. and also two pawns are missing uh, for for white and uh, if you get one pawn back you're, you will be still missing another pawn. Uh, and uh, how you find, uh, even, even though she has pretty uh, active pieces right now, she can easily trade some pieces and get to the end game and just to uh, demonstrate her skills in the end game once again. In fact, she's uh, simply two pawns up if we count the material. Mm -hmm. exactly. And that explains everything. Now there is a threat though. Uh, Bishop takes b4. Uh, cannot be followed by knight takes before because there would be rook takes queen and she's right she's getting out of this x-ray queen c5 yeah. well two pawns up for one of the best female chess players of all time mm -hmm. looks like an easy game once again gulnar we are rooting for you we do not hide that we want some fight here <laughs> Yeah, we're not hiding that for sure. Um, but what we have, I every there there the uh, chat, and there was like uh, there is a uh, master classes from how you find it. It's actually true. We're seeing high quality chess over here. By the look of uh, of this match, uh, do you think who you find could be actually winning the whole of women's speed chess championship? Um. Seeing the other matches, the other matches um, were very, very close. And uh, to be honest, I could not predict uh, any, any match, any result in that match. Uh, and seeing her in, in best shape here, I think, uh, I think she's the one. She's the one who we should consider as, as a favorite of the tournament. Yeah, speaking of favorites, uh, there are many, many big names here in the quarterfinals already. And we have uh, one of them who is uh, Yekaterina, Katerina, better to say Lagno, mm -hmm. world's uh, blitz champion. Uh, that could be a very big, um, very big conqueror to how you find. But okay, it's too early to say <laughs> that. Uh, first things first. Okay, let us <laughs> see if how you find manages to to finish this match uh, in her favor, even though she's leading. But once again, we all expect the bullet part of it. Exactly. Sixteen minutes more to go in this time format. Five plus one. Next gonna be uh, three plus one, and then final part. I'm sure we're gonna see lots of fires in that part one plus one and uh, Gunnar, Gunnar will show her best in that um, in that format. A5 followed. This is a very uh, favorite part um, or very favorite move for, for our viewers. I have no doubt the en passant move. Uh, not many are familiar with this one. When the pawn crosses this uh, mm -hmm. square jumps, it can be actually taken. It was not accepted. There was no interest because the knight was hanging. But it would be a beautiful thing for some of you who are watching us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's always a question. Like, well, what just happened? What's in, in Passant and so on? There are many questions about it. Um, yeah, and it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful um, possibility of the chess. And um, oh. Gulnar resigned. The score is four and a half to um, half a point. Uh, speaking of questions, uh, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to, to address them to us. We're doing our best to take care of the chat as well. And that would be a pleasure. Indeed. And another uh, French defense here we have. 
Uh, let's see if they're gonna change something. Uh, for the for, uh, for the previous time, it went well for uh, how you found how where the game was ended in a draw uh, because Golner Mamed uh, Mamedeva showed really good uh, skills of defense. Uh, let's see here. White is thinking how to continue, but she still goes with Queen G4 targeting uh, G7 pawn, and here we have King F8 defending. Defending G7 pawn. Um, that could be really, really strange moves, right? Now white comes back on D1. Uh, Queen made this mana ring just because to um, uh, to uh, get this castle in right from uh, from black, right? Black cannot really castle here anymore. True, true. And you know, it reminds me of something very, very familiar, MVL versus Yan Nipomneshi, wasn't that their type of position? It was a very decisive game. Oh, where was it? It was just before, just before the pandemic. Uh, yeah, it was, was this a candidates G4. tournament probably. Candidates, uh, yes, yes, that is it. It was one of the, it was the last round of the candidates just before it was uh, postponed. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did have the same idea with queen g4 forcing black king to ruin his uh his chances for castling and then uh, using this opportunity but the biggest the biggest advantage of it for white is that black's rook here on h1 is totally dead for now mm -hmm. really needs some um some ambulance help <laughs> That's true. That's true. Uh, well, there is some, some chances to artificial castle here. That can be king g8, king h7, or g6, king g7. Um, that is the chance to get this rook out of the game. But however, I feel that that's going to bring some weaknesses in black's position. And black really feels to keep this rook on h8 just in case of defense, in case if white starts to attack with g4, g5. Uh, for the moment, that's okay. But if there are some uh, queen trade or rook trade, then uh, king might be even closer to the center. That's why she's not really, really uh, worried about the king being on f8. And what an amazing maneuver here with the rook, bringing it via h4 to f4, now attacking. White doesn't need any castling. Uh, here anymore but uh compared to black king it is totally safe with the knight on h4 here aiming to sacrifice one day knight g6 is that the idea um it can be idea of king gets on f a file uh actually it was the main idea here for uh for uh white to put up some pressure on h uh, on f and g pawns uh, and at some point, yeah, we might see some uh, some uh, sacrifices here. Right now, she wants to uh, to capture the pawn on h6 because there is a, a pin on the rook. Uh, and the question is how black is going to defense this pawn because rook cannot really move. G7 pawn will be hanging. And once again, Kim comes to rescue the pawn. That is what it ha what's happening here. So for the moment, we don't have uh, bishop h6 sacrifice. Um, we do not have bishop h6, but what do we have? Rook g7 followed by rook takes g7 and bishop h6. Mm -hmm. Holy fine, took some time, but it looks like totally winning to me. What did mm -hmm. she think of? Didn't she see that immediately? Uh, I, I believe that I believe that Gunnar just blundered that that move. Because she was looking uh, for defense uh, for h6 pawn, she overlooked that. Uh, and uh, also for how you find it's, um, you know, it takes some time to spoil that sacrifice. Yes, absolutely. But this is a very typical sacrifice. Uh, reminds me of a uh, battle rush. You know, you have this. <laughs> you need to to make as many as you can in the limited time control also very good tool for practicing your calculation skills highly recommended to everyone yeah we might see this this game in the puzzles that we're solving i think every day i'm, I'm trying to solve that every day it's a really good tool to um to see some typical ideas and also to train
Yes, absolutely. Any uh, any player who wants to to progress does need to solve puzzles daily. It is uh, urgent. It's it's like a um, weightlifter making mm -hmm. their their daily exercises super important. One cannot um, improve without those. Uh, Rook H8 followed here. Obviously, there was no um, no interest in capturing that rook because it would be followed by the checkmate. Uh, even well, not immediately, but later on, the position is lost. How many times did I say that? I start mm -hmm. feeling some pain here for for Gulnar, but okay, mm -hmm. no pain. It's not about pain. It is about opportunity. You are facing how you find. You are the one to face her. She might actually. <laughs> Who knows? Will she compete? When will she compete next time? Well, we know when actually she will be mm -hmm. competing this summer with um, some of the best uh, grandmasters um, of uh, the world. But okay, still. Yeah. What do you think here? Is it? Oh, she already played. I just wanted to suggest Bishop C1, Bishop A3 idea to target the knight, pin the knight, and then there might be some sort of sacrifices with knight G6. Uh, coming next or even just get rid of that knight and then uh, sacrifice on f7 this position is full of tactic tactical motives uh, and of course it is uh, quite hard here to defend all the weaknesses and all the threats uh, for black absolutely and also this maneuver activating the the French bishop from d2 to a3 is already familiar to us. There is a pleasure seeing uh, how you find showing us how to play French defense. Uh, <laughs> I actually start to think that by the end of this commentary, I will try French myself. <laughs> That's a good idea. I cannot try that because I don't play with either colors. Like, I'm not even close to play the French defense. Uh, but I really like this structure. Uh, they are very sharp. It's it's not that equal position, uh, and uh, there are also a uh, lot of tactical motives. So why not to study it? Why not uh, to learn from the best, especially when you have such, a, as I said, a thematical mm -hmm. match. Uh, they are uh, they are uh, training in French defense. They're uh, they're they're showing us how to how to how to do that and. Mm -hmm. uh, well, speaking of concrete, plus 11, oh my, plus 11 for... There are some sacrifices my. here. Uh, Black is preparing to play uh, Rook B1, but uh, there is not big of drama here for White because at some point after trading the Rooks, King comes on D2 and uh, King is safer, yet another move. Uh, and here, on the other hand, uh, who you find is uh, calculating some sacrifices. I believe that... Uh, uh, knight g6 is the first move. Second move might be queen f4 or queen f3 to, to immediately attack the f7 upon, uh, sacrifice the rook and then get the bishop. But she's going the easiest way. She is uh, capturing the knight, which is the good defender. And after a king takes, maybe now knight g6 wins the rook. Uh, on a spot, queen g6 also looks very strong. Queen f4 is is an option. So this move is is a winning move, and she goes for rook. That is one extra rook on the board, and um, king still is weak. Yeah, there is some hope here for the a pawn. If only it could uh, become a queen, but. There is timing, there is timing, there is this queen, uh, oh, there is this king, sorry, Katie, you said it, it is a week mm -hmm. and there might be some, some checkmate soon. Who is faster, black or white? Uh, the queen promotion or the checkmate to the king? Um, mm -hmm. Oh, it, it means that uh, white has three moves here to checkmate the opponent, so... The three, no, <laughs> black 13, needs... 13, wait. 13. No, 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 no. I mean, I mean, uh, for black, it's like a3, a2, a1. That's a three moves. And meanwhile, oh, yeah. white can can True. play some attacking idea moves here. And uh, I believe that there's going to be checkmate pretty soon, even in three moves. Queen d8 is now coming. Knight d6 will be the next move. And rook is also coming. And yeah, that's going to be another victory. Yes, that is true. Uh, the three moves uh, were only the time to promote. The queen comes, um, well, 
Hu Yifan is not、uh, a machine. She's a human being. <laughs> She also makes mistakes. So where are they? Where are her mistakes? <laughs> yeah, but knowing her and、uh, knowing her、uh, training、uh, schedule and the plan. Uh, she was pretty much training like machines. <laughs> that well, is, is that、um, is what her, she's trained for. You know, this is interesting. I actually read once in her in one of her interviews、mm -hmm. when she already、uh, put on hold her、um, competitive、uh, career. She、mm -hmm. said that she didn't、uh, consider herself、uh, that professional because she didn't.、Uh, Train. Let's say、uh, she 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 used to train three to four hours.、Uh, mm -hmm. Like if we say、um, in like a routine, yeah. Well, not speaking about the the training camps, obviously. But、uh, from her words,、uh, she didn't、uh, work that hard as many would, and that's why she didn't consider her as being a fully professional. Oh wow, that's that's something that I I could not expect. But on the other hand, all this、uh, all these cool guys are saying that they are not training enough, and for them it's never enough to train. They want to you know put up one hundred percentage and get a one hundred percentage out of it. But、uh, I don't know.、Yeah. For, for for many of us, she's she's、uh, pretty much professional chess player. Yeah, definitely. She's just is... amazing. Yeah, the definition of professional is、uh, can be explained in 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 many ways. But、um, well,、uh, either way, she is、uh, one of the world's best、uh, of all time female chess players, and、mm -hmm. uh, she is here. She is、uh, making our day. In fact, she is making our day. Her presence here,、mm -hmm. and、um, yeah, we have this position once again when we have the、uh, symmetrical pawn structure. Uh, and uh, earlier we saw we saw really nice,、uh, really nice technique from Ho Yufan.、Uh, she started、uh, attack on the king side out of nothing,、uh, and then also we saw beautiful technique in the end game, and she converted everything into the、uh, point three minutes. Before the end of this format, I am personally looking to the short-term time co control. Let's see if、um, Golnar has、uh, more more to show in that format.、Uh, so I believe this is the last game for for this for format. What do you think? Yes, definitely. This is the last game because、uh, once the time ta the timer is、uh, over, they will still have a chance to finish the game. It's not like you know in Arena Kings where your game gets、uh, aborted ab、mm -hmm. uh, whenever the timer is off. No, here they will continue. This game will be the last. And speaking of、um, speaking of end games, the end game, the previous end game that we saw. Uh, the one you described、uh, was、uh, really drawish, symmetrical, equal,、mm -hmm. and how you find managed to outplay. And in fact, here we have the exact same variation that was in that game. It、mm -hmm. is the exchange variation of the French defense. This is the strategy of Gulnar. She wants to just to、uh, you know to survive, to survive until it's、uh, it's getting shorter and faster. We both expect we we all expect her to score more in the shorter time control, and、uh, well, I said speaking of end game here, it's not an end game any、uh, yet. It's not an end game yet,、mm -hmm. but there is a tendency the queens would eventually、uh, trade. Yeah,、um, here is interesting if Black is going to long castle or uh, she's uh, she she will keep the king in the center and put up some pressure on H file because this H three pawn、um, can be a target for Black. And here we have long castle. She wants to attack, and I would be afraid if I were White to show a castle on the short side because Bishop H three is 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 right there. At some point, so that's why、um, you know, Golnar here goes to Long Castle as well to avoid this kind of attacking、uh, play from、uh, Black. And what can be the plan here for Black? Do you see some some ideas? Well, yeah, there is this ninety four, which already is、um, partly an answer, taking the center, maybe considering F five. And speaking of short castle, I would even call it a suicide. You know, <laughs> castling under such an open file with a rook here would be totally,、uh, totally insane. Yes, of course, Gunnar didn't do that. Here, the plan for black. Well, there is this beautiful knight. You said it already in the 
in the previous time we had this uh, structure, it is like who is the person who is the one to take these central squares for the knights uh, uh, mm -hmm. is having an advantage. She did it. How you find put the knight on e4, and then there was a trade, and now we have this a2 pawn exchange the traded versus the d4 central pawn. Usually, we say that the central pawn is more important than the side pawn. Mm -hmm. Yes, but when you have the king on that side and the queens and rooks are still on the board, uh, we might see some some sort of attack on the queen side. Uh, um, how about how about to push c5 at some point? c5 uh interesting pawn break in the center yes looks really uh, really basic um looking at this pawn structure at this position and here we go you asked for it you have it thank you <laughs> are you fun <laughs> to, to give me that satisfaction <laughs> she heard you she took your <laughs> advice on seriously <laughs> Yeah, and here this pawn end game in long perspective, if we're talking about end games, of course, the pass pawn, uh, farther pass pawn, which black has on a file is, is stronger. Um, uh, but, uh, but, 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 but the question is if they are going to trade the queens now. That's, that's a good, that's a good question. What do you think? Is, is she going to trade the queen or keep the queen? She's, she's I trading. just wanted to say that she, it would be interesting to avoid queen trading because who you find wants to score mm -hmm. and Gulnar uh, wants to just to, half to equalize <laughs> to half score. So yeah, I, I'm surprised she did uh, trade those. I'm surprised because, well, it's uh, here it looks way better for mm -hmm. for white. This type of endgame looks way more promising for white compared to the previous end game we had. The position mm -hmm. is equal. I even wanted to say that I uh, prefer white here, you know? Oh, really? Mm. Yes, because there is this idea like rook b4, it is, it is stronger than the rook, let's say, I don't know, rook d8. Rook h1 has way more opportunities here than the rook on h8 and what well, did i say rook h1 yeah rook h1 rook, uh, yeah anyway and the bishop <laughs> look at the yeah. bishop the bishop on e4 is strong it is stronger than the bishop on e6 well he might be kicked away which would not be the case for black now h5 um wait what no i don't agree with that one i don't agree with that one but she didn't have any choice right your rook was attacked so she couldn't just um mm -hmm. uh he, he, could she rook h1 would that be possible maybe not after a5 okay that explains everything i am trying to just to describe the things but i do not calculate anything and here in fact uh, yes there would be this problem for the rook which forced gulnar to um, get back to the passive mode mm -hmm. yeah yeah so we have this uh, disposition for the moment and uh, the time is already up uh, for this format. Uh, after this game, um, we'll have a very short break and the next uh, time control uh, will start quick uh, quickly. Mm, uh, so um, draw might be here, um, normal result for both players. Um, but if I were black, I would, I would, I would play more uh, here. Yes, definitely. Now that we know what that, uh, how you find it, um feels really comfortable in this kind of endgame she's capable of converting outplaying her opponent out of nowhere so mm -hmm. that is true but uh, but 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 she also has um she also has a five points difference and uh, it starts to be a lot they say they say four um four is already a lot so usually like two three points are okay in this kind of um uh, matchups but five points difference is already a lot and even if uh, she might be crushing her opponent with her eyes closed in the end mm -hmm. of the day she needs to guarantee the win in this matchup and she should not be underestimating her opponent 
Oh, I'm sure she 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 knows that quite well because she has such a big experience. Uh, this experience that uh, chess players are uh, getting for years, it goes nowhere. Um, and yeah, we, we, we are observing beautiful play from uh, Huyu Fan. Uh, she has amazing tactical skills uh, and also um, she has also amazing technical skills. This is, this is really beautiful. Yeah, this combination makes you world's best. Yeah. Being both great at tactics and um, strategical play. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because mainly most of the players, um, they they choose one direction or they feel comfortable with direct one direction and they are training more of their strengths. Uh, for, for last years, I believe that uh, this attitude changed a little bit and players now uh, are training uh, on both of these skills. Um, and um, yeah, this mainly happens at the highest level of chess. And this is really nice to see uh, one player being two person, <laughs> two people at the same time in the one game. Yes, being universal, being universal. Yeah. One thing I wanted to mention, Kerry, I didn't like the move uh, king to d2. I was hoping for king d4 being more active in the end mm. game. That was actually a surprise for me why she didn't play that. I guess she wanted to protect the, the g pawn. There was no way to protect me, but... Uh, I agree with that. Yeah. I agree with that. King King D4 is a beautiful move and also avoids some uh, future checks. Like when Rook captures on G2, that's going to be with a check. So you have to lose that move there as well. Yeah, I was surprised by this decision, but okay. Uh, the game finished in a draw, which is a, uh, a small achievement. It is an achievement for Gulnar because now she, she keeps this five points uh, difference. She's down five points. But we're about to see the segment number two with three plus one. Yeah, yeah, let's hope for the best there. And we're coming back shortly just after the small break.
and welcome back to the Women's Speed Chess Championship. We're now witnessing the match of a legend, Grandmaster Ho Yufan, facing international master Gulnar Mamadova. We already passed the segment number one, and we're about to see the second part of it, three plus one. But before we go to that, we do have something to, to tell you. We are... We're super excited to to be having the the world's world's uh, championship match, and uh, you know what, Chess.com has the exclusive rights for it. Yeah, that's amazing, and we're looking forward for the match against Magnus Carlsen and Jan Nepomniche, who are also very good friends, uh, and all the eyes are on them for sure. Um, but before that, we have we have things to do here, over here, and uh, as um, as as we're starting the new format, uh, that's going to be uh, three plus one, and we're hoping for the best uh, for uh, Golnar Mamedova, who has not uh, scored any points so far. We can see both players here at this at the screen. We have a little smile from Hayufan as well. Um, and they are well focused already, and I guess they will start soon. They are about to start, and uh, it is true, Ho Yifan is leading five points ahead, and um, Gulnar didn't score any points yet, as you said. The only thing I would add is that uh, she does have one point. This is because she made two draws. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, Katty. Oh my! No price defense anymore. Mm -hmm. How did that happen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe she 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 has some preparation here. Knight c six. Uh, I don't remember the name of this opening, but I know that that's that can be really tricky for e four. Uh, here we have on the screen how you find thinking uh, and look at her. Uh, Look at her uh, posture. She's she's trying to remember maybe the line. And knowing this knight c six, it's not that sharp uh, a variation. But you have to remember how to set up your pieces uh, because black will start to push some uh, pawns in the center, uh, and you need to be ready for that. Absolutely. Well, uh, speaking of the name of this uh, opening, there might be many different things out of it. It is kind of, it could be kind of um, Nimzo, but not Nimzo. It could be Perk or, yeah, it could be actually, or oh, Modern. Perk or Modern could be actually, no, now it definitely looks like Perk. Yes. And here we have the main idea of C6, a knight C6 first move is to uh, to develop the king side, just like this, what we have uh, king's Indian position, and then to start uh, play in the center with E5 pawn. Uh, here white has to make some decision to keep the pawn on D4 or to push D5. And in that case, if uh, uh, white pushes D5, then knight jumps on e7 uh, and that is really good square for knight because then after f5 um, king side attack will be really um uh, really something that white should be af uh, afraid of uh all right it didn't happen it didn't happen uh, mm -hmm. black eventually uh took on d4 and mm -hmm. uh now we have a different uh, structure which means different plans yeah, exactly. So here we have bishop d, uh, d7, and the idea of this bishop d7 sometimes is to, to capture d4 knight and come a uh, bishop c6 and target e4 pawn. Um, I have seen some, some positions with queen c8 as well to target h3 pawn, uh, then to push h5, h4. But I think she's going for, yeah, this setup is uh, most uh, most logical one. Yeah, now she decided to focus on another weakness. So to be, it's not a weakness. It's not a weakness on e4, but it is the only target for black. And mm -hmm. she's doing good. She's doing it. She's attacking. This is a typical plan. Well, objectively speaking, white does have an advantage here. After all, it's a perk defense. Uh, it is not known to be equalizing for black, but it's a, it is also a good weaponing, a weapon for, for blitz because you mm -hmm. actually, once again, you can play... Uh, fast you can trick and if your opponent doesn't remember the main line uh he could actually not find a way how to equalize speaking of d5 and now white has a decisive advantage 
Oh, here we have intermediate capture new one, but I don't think that's going to change a lot because D5. Uh, after taking on D5, uh, we have another intermediate move. Bishop takes G7 and uh, Knight on D5 will be hanging. I'm not quite sure that uh, Golnar calculated that uh, before she played D5. Neither do I think she D. Yeah, it looks like a blunder, Katty. Um, was that necessary? D5? It's true that it's a main uh, idea, one of the main mm -hmm. pawn breaks. After all, here uh, in this position, Black didn't have any control of the center, which is a pity, and he wanted to to make his best to gain back the center. D5 perhaps wasn't the right moment. Yeah. Yeah, he, uh, she miscalculated something, and now she has to admit that it was a blunder, and she's getting back uh, the bishop on d7, and she's going to play a little bit uh, defensive uh, uh, mode, um, but that, that actually happens when, <laughs> when you don't calculate. Okay. Yes, that is true, that is true. Okay, so what are the threats? Well, first of all, um, as simple as that, black is one pawn down. And this is d5 pawn. Oh my, it looks like a total blunder. Yes, let's just admit it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, here there are lots of ideas maybe to push uh, d6 to get more space, get the knight on d6. Also the king side dark squares are, are weak. Knight is stuck on h7 uh, in defense these uh, squares now she's trying to trade even though she uh she is pawn down and usually we don't trade pieces when we are missing some material um she's she had to do it because white pieces are extremely active and there is no point to wait the opponent to to win the game there was also a nice idea in case of trading h takes g5 now opening the h file and trying to have at least some counterplay even though the pawn would be protected by the bishop but it would eventually bring one extra pawn to the center for black so could be an interesting uh, thing to do even though as you said we know we do not trade uh, ourselves when we are the material down well surprisingly or not uh how you find decline that trade and now the position we have is uh yeah, that's it's pretty much winning because after d6 pawn, uh, move, uh, another pawn will be lost. So here we are back to our uh, beloved French defense. French transposed <laughs> to Sicilian, which is a king's Indian. You know, I've been, I've been covering some of this uh, similar pawn structures together with Alexandra Kostinuk. And every mm -hmm. time she kept telling me, Dina, why do you call it a French? Why do you call it a Sicilian? It is not, it is King's Indian. And that's <laughs> it. You cannot uh, just uh, decide what is the opening whenever there is uh, w on judging on what black plays. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and here we have again this uh, same idea. At this moment, Golnar decided to stop the Queen side uh, attack. We have witnessed the first, it was the first game, right? In the first game, when Black uh, showed extreme uh, extreme skills of. Uh, mm, yes, taking the control well, of good the B play. File. Yes, yes. And here, here uh, Golnar uh, stopped this attack with A4 pawn. Um, there is still a good play here for Black. As you can see, there is a semi open file for the Rooks. For the moment, queen occupies the p-file. Uh, next can be a4, knight a5, some mana ring, or maybe even c4 or d4, this is the idea. But white still keeps uh, this mana ring of the knight uh, and uh, on the king side. So we might see uh, now uh, some attack on the king side. With Also, the idea is uh, to play h5, h6, or knight h2, knight g4. It's up to the taste uh, for, of white. Yes, definitely. We do see a slight advantage for Black, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, this is explained that they, they achieved more, but mm, comparing to the first game, it feels like uh, White is doing better here. White improved on their on their weaknesses, and uh, we already see the pawn on h6. The only thing is the rook on b -bar is super ugly. <laughs> That's okay. 
that's okay to be ugly sometimes <laughs> for some if it's time. for the sake of for, for it's if it's for the crown <laughs> then it's okay yes. <laughs> yes i like this mannering of uh, of uh, what Colnar is doing mannering with pieces she pushed uh h h pawn like a soldier to create some weaknesses uh and now she's not pushing more pawns but she's bringing now the pieces and oh my god she's losing the bishop wait what happens after knight Nine takes knight take. takes bishop take takes queen g4. queen g4 there might be knight e5 in fact Yes, looks like the pieces are feeling bad. And after knight e5, we shall say queen takes g5, bishop takes g5, queen takes g5. And mm -hmm. um, oh, but uh, but you know, um, uh, how about just knight h2 and queen g4 idea just to just to sacrifice that because king oh, is nice, yeah, what a nice idea yeah, indeed. King is, after bishop, After bishop g5, you want to yeah. take and attack back this bishop. Very nice, but somehow, somehow computer bishop doesn't three. agree. Bishop d3, and the bishop comes in defense. Bishop d3, let us see this one. Oh, it's so complicated. Knight f3, attacking the bishop. Could be actually uh, holdable here still. Mm. Maybe king h8, just like that, and uh, get the e5 pawn. Oh, let us see, king h8. Is, oh no uh, after bishop g5 after bishop g5 yeah. yeah and then king h8 okay yeah. here yeah yes could be could be let us see what happened in the game we already have an up no we do not we don't have any updates uh Gulnar is taking her time this is this is um yes it is a crucial moment critical they say critical moment uh of the position oh, she, she made a move because i say how you found oh yeah she did. Running. she did she did she did you're right she didn't okay. make the move. Oh, knight takes d5. Wow, this one we didn't analyze. Interesting. Pawn takes f4, knight x f4, king h8, knight h5, bishop f8, queen e4 followed in the game, and black is still having an advantage, especially after bishop takes h6. Uh. Position. Oh, for for the moment, knight is hanging on c six. She's knight coming. is hanging, but you cannot take it, can you? Queen takes c six is not possible because of hello bishop d seven. Say bye to your queen. It would be a queen oh yeah, loss. that's that's it. After queen d six, there's bishop f eight. So idea. Queen b six. Uh, Queen b5. Queen d6, queen d6. Queen d6, queen d6, bishop, uh, bishop f8 or rook a6, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that would be interesting. That would be just uh, a total capture of the yeah. queen. That's it why it didn't right, happen. Yeah. That's why it didn't happen. And we had an update, knight f6, knight takes f6, e takes f6, queen f6, queen takes f6. Uh, mm -hmm. And this is the position we have totally lost for white unfortunately they are one piece down mm -hmm. yeah but it was so so nice position uh there was unfortunate blunder with the knight e3 somehow i believe that white could uh, complicate even more that position but this is what it is and so we might see soon resignation uh and i believe now uh this is a time control where uh Gunnar should end the game if it's losing quite quickly and get into the next chance and next game yes absolutely also um for now we could think that it is things are super easy for how you find but you know the rating difference is only 200 points. It's not enough to be leading 100%. Uh, uh, there must be a um, counterplay in this match. There must be there must be some fight. Um, Hui Fan is just having it so easy. Well, now there is a resignation after the rook blunder. Okay. Seems like there are some chances for Gulnar every time, but these chances are only to equalize or to continue like the normal way, not to miss to 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 avoid the mistakes. But Hoi Fine herself doesn't do any mistakes so far. We haven't seen any blunder from her side at all. Yeah. 
Yeah, that is that's impressive. True. That's true. We haven't witnessed any any uh, like terrible blunders or just a blunder. Uh, she's playing really clean uh, game, showing really nice skills. And we want her to be back at chess. She can she can make some of the uh, good performances. I think still she can do it after um, after so many years of break already. Yeah, so some people say um, when she realized she was not, um, um, she was uh, too far to fight for the world's crown, um, she that um, uh, she lost some motivation. Could could that be true? Uh, you mean the, uh... the 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 world's world's crown, the the one uh -huh. that belongs to Magnus for now. Oh, I believe that she she had another inter interest in her life, and that's quite okay to to accept it. Rather than to uh, to give up because uh, you think that you cannot get it, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we have a um, little bit different position here. This same line we already saw once again. Uh, thank you, ladies, for teaching us how to play. Um, French defense. Once again, queen g4 followed uh, by king f8. We do not like that king there anymore. The difference uh, compared to the previous positions we had in this uh, line is that white actually castled. And this is, um, this is uh, yeah, this, this followed after queen a5. White actually castled and white doesn't attack yet the king, the black's king, the, their biggest weakness. This could be... Yeah, this could explain the fact that uh, the position is equal and black is doing, black is, let's admit it, black equalized here mm -hmm. in this line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, there's uh, there's no uh, problems here. The pawn on c5 is, uh, we, can, we can say it's not the great pawn, but for the moment it's not tanking. So, uh, and then uh, black can also start to roll the pawns in the center with d4, create some, uh, some threats e5 pawn can be a target at some point i think black uh, black is all right in this position yes i definitely prefer black here i do think they have an advantage actually and uh this is position favors me uh, more well once again the only worry is the rook i do not like when the rooks are when the pieces are stuck somewhere in the corners they there should be harmony you know be, um, between all of your pieces yeah, yeah, absolutely agree with that. So we expect sooner or later King G8 and King H7 to do the artificial castle in order to bring the rook somewhere to the open files. Okay, so far, is this the first, um, like, thinking of all the positions that uh, Gunnar had against Hu Yufan, is this the first where she's doing, uh, she's doing good? I mean, oh, I cannot I say that she was doing a, a, as well, like previous position, but it was an unfortunate blunder. Um, yeah, it was it was normal, like previous game as well. So in fact, she was doing good in all the positions until yeah. some moment. Yeah, and she yeah, and, the uh, bone. we have witnessed we have witnessed the uh, victory of how you find it mostly in the end games. True. So she just has this, um, like she can, she can control it in a long term better throughout the whole game, uh, not making any mistakes. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have knight e5 on the board, and uh, now after knight takes e5, queen takes e5. Black will be doing great, uh, totally great, being a pawn down already now. So what should be next for white rook b7? Okay, that makes sense. Bringing the rook here once again. I was wondering the other time, um, Caddy, what would uh, is there any any way uh, to describe this uh, seventh rank for rook? Because uh, you know, in Russian, there is actually a very nice term uh, meaning that this is just um, a dream for for any rook to come to seventh or or, or mm -hmm. second rank. 
really. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know in English because I'm not a native speaker, but so I've heard that this rook on a, a seventh rank or second rank is a half point extra. That's what I heard. And speaking of a half pawn, now we already have eight points extra because there has just been a blunder. We have just witnessed a blunder d4. Oh my. And after rook b3, this mm. is a discovered attack on the queen with the attack on the rook. And now eight points for Ho Yupan here in this game after she um, manages to, to win this rook or queen she eventually took, went for queen oh chat oh, says that it called, it called a peak because it's collecting some pawns or what <laughs> yeah in, in many many languages there's different um, uh different uh, terms for all this you know moves and maneuvering and it's so fun to know all of this Absolutely. Once again, French defense. Uh, I, I good example. Just because of no connection between these two rooks, we had a blunder. That is true. That is true. Very good point. It yeah. This was some some kind of punishment for Black for to ignore that much their yeah their rook. Okay, here we go. Once again, symmetrical structure. Black is doing good in the beginning. We know that. We have already seen that. Uh, Black is, uh, is gaining advantage here um, step by step um, almost yeah. every time, even though it starts being equal. Yeah. So once again, we have this setup, but uh, they are trying to change somehow. Uh, and here we have uh, uh, this knight maneuvering on f5 and the pawn is supporting from g6. Yes, very <laughs> nice. One could say, isn't that weakening the dark squares? But no, no, it's not because there is no one uh, taking uh, um, advantage of it. There, There is no dark squared bishop anymore for white and he cannot enter those squares. So it is fine. But sometimes it's really not... Um, not advised for, for the beginners, for instance, to push your pawns, uh, which are supposed to protect the king. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. But for the moment, it's hard to say how white is going to, to use that uh, weakness. And here we have uh, some traits and uh, white is, for the moment, white is controlling e file. But after rook e8, these rooks will be off the board. And uh, okay, this end game after queen trades can be. Oh, yeah, oh, this is, it this can. is interesting. Now it can. I know what you wanted to say. You wanted to say it couldn't be bad for white, but yeah. But Sometimes. she made a move before I say that, so I stopped <laughs> on time. <laughs> Actually, she didn't do much. Actually, her mistake was a rookie one itself because tactically it is lost. Here, there is no, after rookie eight, there is no choice anymore. Uh, white does need to, to, to take back the rook. And unfortunately, sometimes chess is concrete. Even though we were, were trying so much to, to, to explain the things to you in a general way, sometimes you do need to calculate and hear the calculation process shows us that the one or, or other or, or another pawn will be uh, will will fall and mm -hmm. uh this brings an advantage again to black to how mm -hmm. you find i have i just had a question question for uh, which came to my mind if how you find uh after um after being gone from uh being professional chess player if she's keep training chess that's that's something that I'm so curious. Like, she's so good. I, I think that she's training every day and keeping her shape. You know, um, sometimes uh, for, for such people, chess is just a part of their life. And even if, let's say, they, they are not active, they're not competing actively, they still keep a track of everything that is, ha that is uh, happening in chess. Uh, daily and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if she was still solving at least puzzles every day 
Well, that's actually a good question. Oh my, we have so many questions to ask her. We won't have much time, but we do need to come up with something uh, which could eventually um, mm, reveal some secrets. Yeah. Okay, now we're witnessing, um, I wanted to say we're witnessing the, um, the dying animal here, but uh, there might be a hope for a perpetual. Oh, let's see. Uh, what, In why, why, why black is going to, oh, for white. Uh -huh, yeah, okay. I mean, for, for both, yeah, for both. Yeah, but yeah, you're right, for white. There might be a perpetual here. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Because after King H6, there's Queen F4 check. Yes. Um, and uh, King is attacked, so he needs to go. And now Holy Fine takes your time. He goes King H6. G5, only way, only way to avoid. Okay, now no perpetual for a moment because there is Queen G6, but it's a Queen endgame. There is still hope. There is still hope for Gulnar to, to make it um, as a draw, not to lose it. Also known to be totally, totally winning when you are playing Queen's uh, end game with so many pieces up. Mm. Okay, after Queen G6, there's Queen F, uh, Queen F8, another check. King comes on H5, plays G4 check, and uh, King can capture that. There is a three. But no, she's not going for that. I think uh, she will try a little bit here. And of course, draw is, uh, draw is a good result for Ho Yifan as well. If, if it's draw, she will accept it. Yeah, she will accept it because uh, she has eight points. She's eight points ahead of her opponent. But um, I'm curious. Yeah, there are some greedy. practical chances. There are some practical chances for uh, Gunnar Ma uh, Mamadova to. Uh, to equalize the match because still there's 19 minutes to go we don't know what's going to happen and then we have another format one plus one uh ahead of us um so that's why how you fun is trying to be fully focused to get all the possible points and she she is not relaxed yet yeah, I just wanted to say that Black chose a good plan here to advance their king, to activate the king. But now I look at the evaluation bar and I see that that was actually a mistake because there is finally a perpetual here for Gulnar. That is a nice thing. Um, yeah, well, I was saying, I, I'm wondering if um, Hoi Fan is greedy for the points, but... It's not just about being greedy, it's just about being professional um, the moment you play the game. So if you have an advantage, usually mm -hmm. you want to convert it no matter what is the score, even though the draw is also good for you. Yeah, and here we had beautiful smile from Ho Yuan. I believe she, she knows she knows that it was winning position and she missed the chance we have seen. We have not seen yet missing missing chances from Ho Yuan, but uh, yeah, her, her smile was very beautiful. Oh, that's true. This might be actually the first time she actually missed uh, her chances. Yeah. Okay. First time we didn't see any Queen G4 in this line. First time Black will be able to castle as a human being. <laughs> or maybe not, now that the age probably. Well, yeah. I guess uh, White's Rook doesn't uh, share the same opinion. Mm. Oh, Dina, um, I remember how you fun was playing um, most of the tournaments with, uh, with a cup. Uh, she had always the same cup. Um, it was a like mug mostly, and this mug was covered. And we, all of us, when we were kids, were so so curious what was inside, <laughs> what she was drinking during the game. Um, and I think later on, she was still still uh, having this mug with her during her games. 
wasn't it uh, uh, some kind of a sponsor sponsorship drink no 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 it was nothing written there it was just a huge mag um it was some some metal it was looking like metal uh, and it was covered from the top so to to keep the heat i guess it was something uh, something like tea uh, and it is, uh, she was um, drinking during the game it is well known that some of the players actually have the rituals, you know, drinking some tea or coffee or having, especially being kids, having even some some animals on the mm -hmm. uh, on the near <laughs> them. Well, now the rules have been more strict recently. The rules have been restricted. Um, the, the latest official championships I've been playing uh, forbid, yeah, forbid. Uh, actually, the presence of any drink uh, on your on your um, on the table. Oh, yes. Even water. I'm curious. Yeah, even water. Well, this was uh, the this was uh, more of yeah national national and championships in Russia, but also mm -hmm. I believe European championship recently. I'm curious to see how it will go in the World Cup, which uh, will start soon. Uh, from the oh, time maybe of it July. was uh, because of the uh, restrictions, COVID restrictions, they are avoiding to have some. Yes, also, but also the, because you know, there's always a risk that you do some accident and you split it on the chessboard. Mm. Yeah, I have, Which... I have seen that. I have seen that. At one yeah, turn, and it was horrible, horrible process. <laughs> it's so funny process. It was a T on the board, like on three boards, I guess. And we were just adjusting. Arbiter was there. Times we were running. Some players were reminding us their seats and thinking about the position. So it was such a mess. And I'm really happy that uh, uh, nowadays we have these rules that uh, it's forbidden to eat and at the chessboard. So just for those who wonder where does all this conversation go to, if there was some kind of a um, a special drink which made how you find uh, win the games uh she wouldn't be she wouldn't be able uh, to um, to use that that often anymore but i do believe she doesn't need all that she's just uh, uh capable of beating anyone naturally but it, it is interesting many many strong players do have their habits their rituals mm -hmm. and sometimes even it could be an important psychological thing for them to win. As we know, even tennis players, for instance, some of them need to throw the ball several times uh, in order to make their to make their <laughs> thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do you have something like this? That I used using? to. I used to have, for instance, I really prefer like uh, having this idea of um, a lucky lucky uh, pen because you know when you're playing over the board chess you do need to know the moves and uh you have your pen sometimes well you, you used to have your pen and uh whenever i lost the game to your tournament i used to change the pen almost <laughs> uh, obligatory change your pen because it was unlucky <laughs> what about you Oh no, I don't. I don't have any, and I was really strict with that not to have anything because then I'm so much focused on on that part, how the things are going. That I just don't want to have any any of those things. Yes, absolutely. Let us see what happened on the board uh, during the time uh, we were discussing uh, what how you find drinks. But now we need to discuss what how you find plays because she did play some moves here, even many moves, and uh, she has an advantage. I'm not surprised. She does have an advantage. There have been some changes in the pawn structure. Now look at this. Uh, oh my, look at this bishop on e6. Is that a bishop or another, <laughs> simply another pawn in this pawn chain? Yeah, it's not looking good. It's a good bishop here. And also the other pieces are not so good looking um, for, 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 for black. But we have seen uh, the, this kind of structure where uh, Golnar was able to make a draw. Yes, absolutely. So the knight is passive protecting the b6 pawn. The bishop e6 is just a pawn. <laughs> the rook on h7 is not a rook does black here have any normal piece 
uh, the, the thing is that they they are well defended for the moment. Uh, and I think now B5 will be will be a move that's gonna be gonna be safer, but oh no, at the same time the pawn is gone from H file and now that's gonna be extra pawn. Yeah, that's gonna be a passed pawn here. Wow, she dominates, she dominates so fast uh, her opponents. We do not even realize when is the critical moment. When does uh, Black make mistake? What about this game? Where did Black uh, make mistake? If we want to be, let's say, if we want to be objective, uh, let us go back a little bit and see where was the mistake here. Because I honestly think that um, it will be super fast for, 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 for White to convert. Oh, by the way, Donna. Uh, sorry, Dina. It's it's. Uh, I've heard from some some chess players that playing against the strongest uh, opponents, it is they are taken as their um, um, advantage in the in the future because they can see what problems do they have in the openings or just in in their games, uh, and who can show you that better than the strongest uh, chess player. <laughs> so I believe, I believe that after this match, uh, Golnar with her coach will analyze her games and finding her the, uh, the mistakes that she made. And in the future, there's going to be a great experience for her, like as if she takes this match as a training match. Absolutely. This is what I meant. It's an amazing opportunity simply because it's an amazing experience which can reveal your weaknesses, which can show you where you what are this what are your strengths also. But here mostly weaknesses definitely look at the score. Well, um you know, I actually have this kind of philosophy whenever I play any game because I against is yes, true. versus a stronger opponent, you're right. Because I usually say okay, I have nothing to fear. The worst thing that can happen is that I will lose and, they, and then I will see like uh, what, I'm, what are the things that I need to work on. But you know, also I mostly relate this to my uh, opening repertoire. Yeah. Yeah. And also it is interesting. Sometimes I even tell myself whenever I succeeded with the opening, uh, no matter what is the result, I already succeeded the game because uh especially when you start a new opening you do need to to master that one and uh well chess is so complicated and everyone <laughs> has his own um secrets um yeah and strategies that's true but and, okay let's uh let's uh, look at from the bright side Goldner Ma Mamadova here managed to score one and a half points against very strong Chess player, this is this is something that we should also point. Like, um, how many how many chess players can can score any any result against how you fun? Yes, that is true. That is absolutely true. And uh, still, uh, no matter what happens here in three plus one, we do expect here to win some games in bullet section. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bullet, bullet section will be the most uh, fun for uh, fun part of of this match also she's not the one she's not the only one who has a um a big uh, let's say big difference in the score against her opponent we've already seen those matches i believe uh lee uh yesterday had a really really big uh advantage uh wasn't it 14 to 4 or something like that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's that's true. It was um, a very big advantage for Anna from from the very beginning. Was it for Anna versus uh, versus uh, Yulia? Yeah, Anna was a chick versus yes. Yulia Osmak. Yeah, even though uh, Yulia uh, Osmak is the, is a player who wins uh, a lot of online events, uh, still uh, the fight uh, was the fight was not that close. Yes, because sometimes it is also like you respect your opponent so much that it affects the way you play. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No respect the points, for the opponents. <laughs> no, no respect at all. Not to no one, not even to world champions. And uh, yes, this is how you can beat them. This is how Andrei Yesipenko beat it Magnus Carlsen. You shouldn't respect them with all the respect <laughs> to them. 
here we go. The position is equal. It might be yet one more chance to score for Golnar, having two points in the end of the day or in the end of the segment two. Well, she can she can say that she scored. She yes, she scored some points against Hayofan. Why not? If I if I if I were a goner, I don't know if if I could even manage to get half point against Hayofan. Let's be honest. <laughs> so here we have uh, Mama Teva Golner putting all what she can do. She's doing her best. Yeah. So well, you never know. It's also. Uh... It's a question of your state of mind, the exact moment where you face these beasts. And uh, at least um, changing the topic here, we have uh, something new. I asked for it. And here we go. Again, uh, modern defense could be transposed to Pirk. They are playing against who you find. You know, it's interesting. Um, now, let me put myself on the Golnar's uh, position. If I were Gulnar, I would uh, probably consider playing some main openings, main lines. No, 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 that's not what I meant. Uh, playing solid openings, not the dubious ones, because um, at least to avoid getting crushed, you know, in the opening part. Um, because uh, anyway, these uh, players, uh, as how you find, they like, Whatever they play, then something dubious, they usually just uh, kill you. Okay, we are not on their place. We are commentators and we are here to see what happens and to comment on it. And uh, what happens is that right now, uh, White is having an advantage because they have a center. Because this is a normal thing that happens in the modern defense. The idea of Black is to make some kind of a pawn break now that the bishops are killed for now they are stopped by two double barriers these are barriers the very important thing would be to break through either with e5 or to c5 and to hope for some kind of counterplay uh here for black that would be a dream yeah absolutely that's uh, that can be a plan for black to uh to activate their bishops and break through this century because a uh, strong century means that white has more space and more space means that white pieces have better scores uh and also look at look at this rating 2792 um uh, on chess.com we might witness her uh Passing Getting 28. 28. She, yes. We actually had, we actually had just in the previous game before, uh, mm -hmm. before the two consecutive draws. I believe it were, these were two consecutive draws. Yes. Before that, how you find did already cross 2800. I noticed that um, it is mm -hmm. a very big rating, very high rating. It's still not enough to reach, let's say, Hikaru or Dania Naroditsky. But it is very impressive. It is one of the strongest uh, uh, ratings of um, any female uh, chess players um, having yeah. their official accounts uh, on chess.com. Yeah, um, uh, we just we just saw that uh, how you find uh, took your uh, took her glasses off and just tried to relax a little bit the eyes. Is is does that mean that she's she's a bit tired? Let's check the time. Let's just check the time. If somebody knows where which city she lives, and if that makes any sense in time difference, that's gonna be perfect. I think it's quite late for her already. Yeah, but okay, Dignoren has been um, forced to so many, so many different uh, conditions, uh, playing at least um, basically almost any time. I believe uh, Hoi Fanya, yeah, she needs to, um, she just needs to accept it. Uh, no matter what the time is, you play chess, that's your thing, you are one of the best at it and uh, you'll do good. Oh, China has only one time zone. That means that in at her place, it's uh, almost uh, 10 p.m. Wow. OK, so um, speaking of the position here, we have a nice knight on c4. I do like this knight because it's an outpost, but there is also knight on g5. And the question is, who is, uh, who is more dangerous? Knight on g5, you know, it attacks mm -hmm. and it threatens the king. Not so easy to kick it, but when we compare it to the knight on c4, what does this knight attack? Nothing. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Night on, on G5, or we all can also see it creates some mating threats right now. Mating one is on the board. On the other hand, E6 pawn is hanging. This pawn can be taken by the queen, by the knight, both possible. And H5 is hanging if if somehow miracle, <laughs> with a miracle, uh, black defense all these such um, threats, then queen takes H5. That's going to be good enough. She didn't even want to do that. She just played uh, the the cozy little rook e one. Nice, showing that uh, she has time. She has time. She's not in the rush to to smash everything here on Black's uh, position. Yeah, and it rook b uh, rook b one now um, gets the b file over the control, and uh, e three bishop is hanging at some point maybe queen b4 is black's next move to target the rook uh, and just increase the pressure on e3 uh, bishop as well yeah how much time do we have left in uh, this second segment seconds this is the final final game for this segment uh 40 seconds more more exactly 40 okay this is the final game you mean mm-hmm yeah, this is the last game of this, uh, okay, of the three plus one. Okay, uh, Gulnar, you can do it. You can do it. <laughs> uh, well, maybe not. In this game, maybe not. I don't see much uh, here for, for black Ooh. well nice sacrifice very nice sacrifice showing us how to take care of your rooks rook takes e6 rook takes followed by queen f7 and now getting back this rook winning the knight on d7 which would make which already made uh two yeah extra piece and the checkmate coming yeah yeah that's it i see lots of uh, lots of tactical motives and uh were played in this game and I think that's gonna be uh, just come base of puzzles will be filled with these tactics. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. We have just uh, finished this segment number two. Uh, shall we now take a short break before we witness the bullet section? That sounds perfect.
and we're back with a very brief announcement here. Junior Speed Chess Championship starts July 4th on chess.com and the total prize fund in that tournament is $35,000. If you are a junior player, that is your chance. Or if you have a friend who fits in this category, please spread the word and bring your friends into this tournament. Absolutely. And that is yeah. an amazing, that is an amazing opportunity for juniors to compete. Although, isn't that a final segment that was already decided in the in the uh, semifinal, in the qualifications? Um, could be, could be. We will see that later. But anyway, here we are um, with an amazing, yet another amazing event with an amazing pr prize fund once again. We have Women's Speed Chess Championship and we are approaching segment number three. Exactly. And he, here we are. We are looking for this segment so much uh, from the starting. We have uh, Bullet Chess 1 plus 1, 25 minutes to go. We are hoping the best for both players, of course. Uh, we kindly wish, kindly wish to uh, Agul Narmamadero to score some points, some more points, but she is already, already a very good player to be here among all these stars uh, and already scored two points. That's for draws, right? Yes, that is true. She does have two points, but she didn't yet win any single game, which is a little bit, um, which is a little bit uh, a pity, but uh, she will definitely score back. Maybe because uh, for the for the very rare time, we do not have any French defense anymore. Mm -hmm. We have a Sicilian, first time Sicilian. It was Hui Fan who changed uh, the direction of the flow. Do you think Katty Hui Fan had a special repertoire prepared for the bullet segment? Oh, that's a good. Uh, that's a good. Uh, uh, good thing. Um, I think. I think. Uh, yes. Maybe not. Like. She is so comfortable to play anything, any opening uh, that, and I believe that she has number of openings in her uh, base that she can play and she can be really confident. Yeah, her, her preparation is um, probably amazing and she can choose whatever she wants, just whatever she remembers. Yes, absolutely. And uh, speaking of the openings and the position, here we have a slight advantage for Black. No, not anymore. After an amazing G5 pawn break, mm -hmm. trying to compete for this E5 square, key square for Black. And here we go. Black has... Um, H4, there was a move, there was a move. Um, there was this H4. was a good yeah. one, but I love that move, H4. Fighting for the square. Uh, somehow, Black um, <coughs> find this bishop e5, really nice idea to guard the pawn on f4. Uh, that's an extra pawn. I love extra pawn. <laughs> Who doesn't love extra pawn? And now she uh, she is bringing um, more and more forces. Uh, maybe rook h8, uh, h-pawn will be gone, another h-pawn will be hanging, uh, and uh, rook will come on h-file just to, just to grab h4-pawn. Next can be maybe bishop f6. Here we have just get this pawn. Oh no, no, she's not getting the pawn. Yeah, she's not. Okay, the position is slightly better for black because... Uh, uh... Draw, draw the position. Okay. All right. All right. That's a good start for, for both of them. That's a good start. Yeah. One thing we could add, the position was with opposite colors. Didn't that we didn't we mention that? Opposite colors. This could be I did not mention that, but I had in my heart. I saw that. Yes. So opposite, opposite. color position position yeah. in any way uh usually makes us think that the draw is uh close mm -hmm. and this is what happened. So okay, that was good. Yeah. Um what, about this what is this opening, Katy? It's a ready defense. Knight f3, g6, g3, bishop, g7 started with. Very nice. But you know what? Ready could be a close um, close brother to King's Indian setup. No, not anymore after the pawn came to d4. And now we have... Uh, what do we have now? What pawn structure? King's Indian for black? 
Yeah, it looks like kings in the end. Kings in the end. Looks like kings in the end uh, when the F pawn is traded to D pawn, uh, and it should be quite comfortable here for 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 uh, black. If uh, black managed to get a dark square bishop, then uh, white will have some issues on the dark squares for sure. Yes, here we have a very typical pawn sacrifice as uh, Nimtsovich even recognized uh, many times f4 giving this pawn away after g takes and e takes f4 black um exchange this black sacrifice this pawn against the e5 square a very interesting one didn't happen oh, okay did you did you notice uh Dina, that how you find just uh she just i think blundered something and she she had a, a big smile on her face what was that for no way no way, she had a big smile. It means, uh, well, I, I would never think she 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 could show her emotions that easily. <laughs> uh, you could never think she could show her emotions that easily. Um, that's nice. That's very nice. Okay, this is she actual game. Have... Yes, this, this is, is actual now game. Have... Now we have uh -huh. the game. now we have oh bullet. Everything moves so fast. Everything changes, and we need to adapt. But okay, we didn't say who you found is now with the extra with, with the exchange she's an exchange up mm -hmm. yeah okay black uh wants to repeat uh white refuse with rook f2 position is totally winning for white but mouse i do count on gulnar's mouse uh <laughs> skills yeah let's see let's see she already got half point and we see here bar going up and down and that is very typical for a bullet chest because players are having seconds on the on the clock and uh, that's very very um um difficult to to play fast and to play without any mistakes and here we see, uh, see that uh, black got back the exchange and we have opposite color bishop again in this position um but white is the first to start checks and uh, we have now checkmate on f f7 in one move black tried to defend that but the pawn is gone where the king goes <laughs> where the king goes on the queen the side? king goes on the world tree but he is discovering the world as if there was still some continent out there to discover <laughs> yeah now before will be followed <coughs> yes with the king to b7 amazing and now queen trade which means a totally losing pawn uh and game not pawn and game but yeah totally losing because of the pawns with the past pawns three pawns up yeah. even if once again caddy we have yet another um opposite to call it bishop and game but in this case there is nothing for black to hope for or maybe there is still yeah, for she, now she managed to stop uh stop yes. uh, king coming into the center now king will take opposition no way uh oh uh oh she did manage uh she uh. <gasps> this tampi this extra tampi she needed to put the bishop on h6 not on f4 because after the pawn sack king to e4 wouldn't be with a tampi on the bishop on f4 and then mm -hmm. she would actually have the 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 temple no it's not the temple it's the is it the temple yeah yeah okay so now she still tries to hold because she forces the um uh, she was okay it would be a draw if we uh it would be a draw had we cut the board into two uh, pieces <laughs> and uh moved away all this uh four pawns but not here not anymore yeah it could be a joy if the bishop is another color but not that's that's the color we have and i think it's time to resign for equal and start quickly another game because uh, of course uh how you find can convert this very very easily yeah and that is true time well, is I ticking 16 more minutes until the end of the of of the match Absolutely. I, I do want to say that uh, Gulnar defended pretty well in that losing endgame. She almost made it until the draw. I wish we could show that position to our viewers because it was pretty educational, but everything moves so fast and we already have the next game of the bullet. So we need to stick to this one. And once again, Cecilia in defense.
Mm-hmm. Is it Moscow line, Bishop B5? Oh, Moscow line. Isn't this, this is a Russellimo, but you mean Bishop D7? This is a Russellimo no, Sicilian. Mm-hmm. Um, I do play with, with, with white, uh, and it's, uh, it's pretty interesting here because uh, it started with the close type of the position, but then uh, just after white play d4 and opened, and now we have the typical normal Sicilian structure with a perfect bishop on g7. Look at that bishop. Isn't that a dream for any bishop to be like him? <laughs> it's a role bishop, a role model bishop for all the bishops around the board. Yeah, speaking of e5, closing the guy, and now with knight e4 coming to d6 or e or f6 everything just um dropped immediately no that's not turned uh in the completely opposite direction now white has an advantage yeah how you find somehow finds the best moves to avoid all this all these knight jumps uh, in the center squares so she plays f5 um, this bishop now it's pretty much blocked on g7 and white knight still have some chances for maneuvering knight b5 knight d6 might be an idea in the future for the moment there's a fight on the file and in the end game in the end game if queens are off the board uh, white has a uh, careless position yes oh, queen b7 is coming be careful be careful here. Yeah, she did protect it. For the first time, I do see a very clear advantage for Gulnar. I'm not, oh, now even more, cl- even clearer advantage for Gulnar. Mm-hmm. Look at this queen h5 that she missed. Yeah, Look at queen h5 that- and grab the pawn. Always yeah. grab the pawn. Always grab the pawn. Absolutely. There was this queen h5 instead of g3, but okay. Still advantage. Advantage for Gulnar. Could that be? Your first time beating the world legend, who you find. <laughs> now that the moment I say it, you know, I actually realize. Take the queen. That... Take the queen. That's your chance. And then push the pawns. Or maybe that's not a good chance. Oh, no. No. Yeah, because there was f4. You needed to calculate there was f4. You know, now spe- um, say- by saying that, I just realized that the. The whole point of being there for Gulnar might be just to win against uh, how you find already a like a lifetime mm. achievement. You know, I mm-hmm. yeah, beat yeah, it. I beat it. Our world's uh, world's best. Uh, but yeah, okay. it was uh, a good chance. Not... It was a good chance. Yeah, pity, pity, very much pity for Gulnar. We're still rooting for her. We'll always be rooting for her in this match, anyway. Yeah. Now we have game number four. I. Uh... Uh, I don't know how your math skills are, but mine are pretty bad. Game number four, isn't it in the bullet section? Mm. We're kind of ready again. Yeah, it's first was draw, second was how you find win, and third was draw, and this is fourth. Yeah, game number four. Again, ready kind of opening. Uh, well, at least uh, they changed the uh, they changed the music. I like that to change the music of the uh, meaning their opening choice opening choice and um yeah the knight on d5 looks beautiful but it can be easily kicked away by c6 mm-hmm. uh the bishop g7 here is not that beautiful as it was in the previous game yeah but has a potential after f5 to be true to be um to, to try to be beautiful again true all right, Katie, do you play ready yourself? Yeah, I like to So play um, you should be enjoying this more than the French defense. Uh. Uh, ready is more like dry position and uh, French defense. I play French uh, defense structure because I play Karakan. Uh, and I believe that there are more, uh, more tricky ideas there and beautiful ideas. So I think I equally enjoy both. Yes, uh, both openings are uh, um, quite solid, which is good. And uh, here, getting back to the position, it's not solid anymore for Black. Mm-hmm. It's not solid uh, anymore. Here, Black has to push f5 and to activate the bishop. This bishop will create so much 
uh, danger for uh, for whites. Bishop d4 will be the move. Knight h3 is also a move, so that means that rook or king has to move right now. Maybe king g2. It would be a dream to bring the knight to e4, but um, did we say that there is an exchange up? And when did that happen? There is an exchange like, up here. Like and sacrifice it happens, on d5. Yes, it happened after pawn takes um, f2, giving away this rook. In the meantime, it was, didn't have much of a choice. And uh, OK, the position says, Oh, black is winning? What happened? What happened, Katy? What did we miss? By trying to get back, we missed a very important and unique moment. Look at this. Yo. Look at this. Oh, no. Bishop F8 in the end. She, she missed. missed that. I'm trying to understand what she missed. She played A4 and she blundered Knight H3. Mm -hmm. Fork. And immediately after Bishop F8 pinning the Bishop and the Rook, isn't that the skewer? And now her position is totally winning. Not anymore. Boy, how did that happen? <laughs> winning again. Still winning. Winning again. Well, this is so, this is changing so much. Okay, no, this one, honestly, this one, she can do it. She can win this one. No, no, no. I said she can win it. Katty, help, help her, help <laughs> her somehow. No, this is not winning anymore. She was, yeah, she was too scared to, uh, to... <gasps> what? oh my God. Oh my God, we, like right now we cannot, we cannot commentate anymore. We can just react, react together with yeah. you on what's happening here. That's a beautiful, um shouldering of the king what we we are witnessing and this is i think this is the first victory yes. this is the first victory of yes Gulnar we saw it. Gulnar Mamadova just did it congratulations she beat it the world's best one of the world's best female players of all time grandmaster who you find and she now has four points Kerry, this is the moment i wanted to to speak to you uh, before Looking at the previous matchups, we already know that if Gulnar wants to do good in this um, in this uh, matchup, knowing that she might eventually still lose, she should overcome the other girls, uh, which scored Yulia Smack scored four and a half against Anna Muzichuk, and um, Vaishali scored six, and now Gulnar has four. So. Looking at the statistics, she's already doing good. Being an underdog compared to other underdogs, she's doing good. Yeah, and a uh, big, big applause is from us to her. And I think, I believe that she can call this a day. Uh, she managed to win at least one game uh, that many, many players could not do. She managed that. She also managed to get four points against her. And uh, I, I I totally feel her. She is extremely happy right now. Yeah, she must be enthusiastic about what's to come. Speaking of, how many minutes does she has? Does she have more? Uh, she has uh, seven more minutes, so it's about like um, two, three more games maximum. Two, three more games. So mathematically, there is no way she could stop how you find any more. But she could, she could show the world that she is not an underdog that is there to be adopted. <laughs> yeah, and looking at the uh, looking at the uh, ratings, Chesscom ratings here, we have uh, we have Gulnar Mamadova actually uh, with a higher rating. The rating is twenty five ninety nine, and it seems like how you fun is not uh, is not big fan of bullet chess because her rating here drops dramatically to 2500 uh, and as we expected from the beginning um uh, gulnar might have uh, good chances here in the bull in bullet chess well wow, that is actually incredible well done Katie, on sporting this one i didn't notice at all it is true that gulnar is almost 2600 here mm -hmm. and she's a clear she's a clear um favorite in this um in this discipline 
but uh, the score is even so far, I believe. Uh, we had five uh, games already, or six. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the score five. is more or less even. Yeah. Now queen d6, <gasps> blundered. She blundered queen d6. There was a check and taking the pawn. How you fun now is mating or promoting the pawn. No, uh -huh. what, I, what did I say? What did I say? I'm so sorry. Gulnar is playing white. How you find blunder? Oh. Another win for Gulnar Mamadova. Whoa, we are we are having the, the our <laughs> our final joy. We're having our joy. Finally, we have been waiting for this one. Yeah, we're getting what we requested from Gulnar Mamadova. This is amazing. Two victories in a row against very strong chess player this is amazing this is amazing and i kind of have a feeling if we start this match you know reversed uh reverse time controls like first one minute plus one second and then three minutes plus one second we might see a different picture right now maybe not uh fully different but still like starting with the victories is very important for the mood uh and um you know for everything Yes, absolutely. Actually, you're right. It's also about uh, your psychological state and uh, being enthusiastic. Whenever you start winning, you feel better and you're inspired and you, you do better. So uh, if the yeah. if the um, order of the time uh, controls was different, it could be that, uh, well, objectively saying Gulnar wouldn't have much chance uh, to win, but still she could score even better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the party is not over. How much time do we have still? Four minutes. Four minutes. That's about two more games. Two more games. Okay, let us see. Mm -hmm. This opening ready again with the bishop on f5. Very beautiful bishop. Both bishops are amazing here. Look at them. They just, uh, I want to say they... Um, they're Gulnar's bishops. <laughs> yeah. She's using she's using these bishops really well for the last games. I like this idea. When she fiancados the bishop on g7, that's that becomes really strong piece. Yeah, absolutely. And um there was just a blunder. Didn't you see the c7 pawn? Queen h3 taking the bishop, followed by queen mm -hmm. g2. There was a crucial blunder. Both girls didn't see the knight uh, c7 idea, mm -hmm. taking the pawn in one. Okay, we're, we're desperately trying to commentate the chess part of the bullet section. It's not that easy, everything is changing. The moment you start the sentence, you don't want to finish it anymore because the things have changed dramatically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, three minutes uh, remains, uh, still on the clock. Let's see how many games they can play. D5, now pawn break, trying to create a passed pawn, which could be just uh, a, um, a a dish for for white. Yes, that's no passed pawn anymore. But uh, yeah, white is better, white is a pawn up. Could be still some drawing chances for, for Gulnar, which would, uh, yeah, which would actually um, improve her chances. She already she already overcome a Yulia Osmak result. So I'm pretty sure she can be uh, proud of uh, uh, this small achievement. I call it an achievement because uh, uh, the moment, uh, the way how the match started, we were, were heartbroken. We were feeling pain and we, we were really worried. Now she definitely makes uh, a good job. Yeah. Oh, 95 was spinning yeah. around in one move. Okay. So we're about okay. to see. Okay, um... we have a resignation and one last yeah. game, I guess, because we have less than two minutes on the clock. Yeah, one last game, uh, most likely. Okay, Gulnar, this is uh, your game. You. Mm -hmm. What? Karakan? No way. Yeah, I tell you, fun. She plays everything. <laughs> Karukan, wow. And the advanced variation, the most, um, the most, uh, so to be, um, 
ambitious variation of Karakan. I do know it uh, personally because Karakan is uh, one of my weapons for Black. Uh, um, I would say, Caddy, you also play Karakan, don't you? Oh, yeah. I enjoy to play Karakan. I like uh, in those positions very much. Yeah, that was a um, good guess of mine. <laughs> Okay, with a knight on e4, Bing is like kicked away by f3. Couldn't last long there. Mm -hmm. But yeah. knight on g6 cannot be kicked away, can't be changed though. But this pawn now is like an outpost. The pawn isn't like a. Yeah, sometimes it happens. It is uh, paralyzing completely Black's position, at least on the king's uh, side. Mm -hmm. Nice, yeah, nicely which, played. Uh... What can be really unpleasant here for black is as uh, king uh, side is blocked totally. Uh, here, white can start to play also on the queen side, but black is the one who is starting to play it, and that's that's actually the best uh, best decision here black can do because if not this active play c5 and so on, then white would open the queen side and then control the whole board. Yes, absolutely, and. Um... Knight is being kicked away, as uh, we predicted. I really like the way how Gulnar dominates this position. Hmm. Yeah, knight gets on uh, b5. Maybe it will get on d6 later. The moment I see that, she blunders the pawn. Hmm. Knight a4 was a blunder. I am 100% sure, because uh, if she saw that, she would just defend it with anything else, like rook, even a rook a2 or rook b1. Mm -hmm. The time is time is uh, already uh, out it's here exciting. for for this uh, format. This is the final match. There will be no more chances for for Gulnar to score another uh, point against Hoyufan. Yeah, this is uh, this is the moment we will be also joined uh, by the players for an interview uh, mm -hmm. just after this game uh, is finished. And um, how will this game be finished? Uh, where are your stakes? Um, I think I think that uh, Black is putting pieces together, and maybe Black can start some some nice counterplay on the king. <gasps> Having opposite color of bishop, that's uh, that can be a case. Oh my god. She just blundered. How you find just blundered with the king? I have eight. She blundered the infiltrate. Made oh, in one. Oh Made my in God. one. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Did you see that? Let me show it to you briefly. It was the moment. The moment was when uh, just the moment you were speaking of the opposite called bishops. There has been move number 30, 36, king g3. Which was a mistake because there would be Queen E8 attacking the G6 pawn. There would be no way to defend it. I guess. Well, well, doesn't matter. <laughs> Bishop H5. Okay. Never. Nevertheless, the point is, King F8 was the blunder caddy, followed by Queen H2, and now no way to stop this. Wow. And did you see how fast Gulnar made that? She did it just in half a second. Yeah, she took her chance. That's brilliant. She scored three victories against Aoyofan and a number of draws. I bet, I guess five draws, six draws, maybe four draws. But whatever, she scored six points uh, and Aoyofan won the match with 15. That is brilliant result for, I think both of them are happy. Yes, absolutely. 15 to 6, especially that Gulnar made uh, the score in the last point. Uh, the, the last game uh, was a score for her, so psychologically she should be relieved. I guess now it's time for us to take a quick break before we are joined by the players for an interview.
welcome back to the Women's Speed Chess Championship. We have just witnessed the end of the last matchup of the round of 16. We now have the name of our last qualifier, Grandmaster Ho Yifan. We're also joined by her opponent, International Master Gulnar Madova. Hello, ladies, and thank you for joining us. Hello, everyone. Gulnar, first question to you. It is uh, not every day that you are facing world's best, one of the best female chess players of the history. How did you feel? How did you how did you approach this match? I first uh, want, uh, want uh, uh, my English is not very well. I am sorry this is, uh, and uh, I uh, have to say uh, this is a big tournament. I'm very happy because play this tournament, and I glad to play a, 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 with a Yifan Ho because she is a number one woman chess world, uh, and I think this is a big practice for me. <laughs> Yeah, that's amazing. Thank you so much uh, for, for these honest words and congratulations for, for amazing for, for amazing um, games that we witnessed uh, uh, from you. Uh, the next question goes to how you find uh, we, we witnessed beautiful play from your side. And uh, there was a question. Do you still train chess? How you keep in this form? Uh, well, actually, not really. I mean, probably uh, you notice the or maybe people who follow chess notice that I didn't play any serious chess tournament starting from beginning of this year. Well, there were kind of rapid one in China happened at the very beginning of the year, like the New Year Festival. But after that, there were nothing serious. And to be honest, I was uh, I was busy with my job in the university and also some other projects going on at the same time. So I'm not particularly training myself and not playing you know, very often, but not playing often. Yeah, and it's a great pleasure to be back and having our Speed Chess Championship as my first, uh, let's say, official online event this year. And as I, I think I'm also a regular uh, guest here for different Speed Chess Championships, both for the women and also for the open section before, yeah. We also know that you will be competing this summer as well with uh, world's best players. And uh, what are your plans for, for this one? Uh, are we talking about the, the, the ramping event that will come in soon? Uh. Yes. Okay, so actually I also got invitation like not long ago and I thought, it's, uh, well, it's a, it's a good opportunity and it's online. So I thought my schedule will make it uh, work. So uh, I just accepted, but to be honest, uh, no preparation has been done so far. But personally, I'm expected to this event and considering this as a, uh, I mean, a practice uh, I mean, just the practice, and hopefully I will show some, uh, I mean, decent performance. That means I'm not like, you know, giving all the points away. <laughs> that would be some, let's say, uh, basic expectations. And I'll um, take opportunity like this big chest also as a warm up because, you know, uh, for this rap and bullet, uh, like shorter time control events, the important thing is that you keep yourself uh, ready and you could see the moves and you could be, uh, you know, as fast as you can. Uh, I, I have a pleasure to bring another question to Hoyo Fan, which our viewers had. Um, so the question is, are you planning or we might see you back in competitive chess? Well, that's, that is also a question for me. I mean, I have no clear idea at the moment because it will depend on the different circumstances like uh, the global situation, right? Uh, nowadays, we're, we're still hard to travel freely and also depends on my personal career plan as well. So I think that is really an uncertain thing, but I would be very happy if one day I could be back uh, otherwise, if I could devote to chess as a different role, I would also be, uh, you know, looking forward to that. Anyway, I'll be stay with our big chess family. That is amazing to hear. Thank you so much to both of you. And um, you find you are competing uh, next in the quarterfinals. We wish you all the best. And Gulnar, same to you. Good luck for what's to come. 
All right, let's take now at the at uh, this screen. So we know all the players who will compete each other in the next stage. And we are ready. We are ready to see their games. We do have all the names here. It's going to be uh, super exciting. We now will have only eight players competing. Once again, knockout system is very, very stressful. And uh, sometimes um, it is only only one. Yeah, there will be only four. And in the end, there will be a final match. We shall see that soon, maybe even this week. The dates will be announced shortly.